This series begins by showing a student named Lee Soong Chon, who attends the most prestigious private high school in South Korea with students from the upper middle class. Some of Soong Chon's classmates also come from the Golden Spoon Circle, such as Park Jong Goon, who is the son of the Army Chief of Staff, Oh Yo Jin, who is the daughter of a construction company owner, and Kwon Min Ho, the son of the director of Soong Bin Hospital. Among all the students at Soong Chon's school, Huang Tae Yong is known as a student from the richest family. Tae Yong is the only son of the president director of the Dosan Group, with a wealth of more than 300 trillion won. While Soong Chon himself comes from a poor family because his father is unemployed and his mother is only a maid, he has to work part time as a food delivery man and convenience store clerk to help pay off his family's debts. When Soong Chon delivers food to the tutoring center, he will take away study material papers for him to study. At school, he has a best friend named Jin Sog, who comes from a poor family, so they both often become victims of bullying by Jong Goon and his group. One day, Soon Chon gets the news that Jin Sog and his father died due to debt and that his house will be demolished by the Dosan Group Company. Knowing that his best friend had died, Soon Chon felt sad and regretted his friend's decision to give up on circumstances and choose to end his life. At the funeral, Tae Yong's father, Huang Hyun Do, seemed to come and be the center of attention of reporters, especially after the news circulated that Jin Sog's family house would be evicted by a company owned by Hyun Do. Hyun Do says that his presence is not as a party responsible for the death of Jin Sog's family but as a father who wants to give condolence for the death of his son's friend. He also said that Jin Sog's family's funeral expenses would be borne by the Dosan Group Company as a form of his concern. Soon Chon, who knows this, is very upset because of Hyun Do's attitude toward his best friend's death. After the funeral, Soon Chon is again bullied by Jong Goon and his gang. Watching from a distance, Tae Yong finally approached them to stop the action. It doesn't take long for Jong Goon to leave and throw the money at Soon Chon, who picks it up. Meanwhile, Tae Yong has now returned to his car. In the car, Hyun Do sees him defending Soon Chon and then reminds him to choose the right friends because he will become the heir to the Dosan Group Company. In the afternoon, Soon Chon returns to work at the convenience store and is seen teaching a new employee named Na Ju Hee how to use the cash register and arranging several items at the convenience store. Seeing Ju Hee, who previously came to the convenience store with a suitcase, he suspects Ju Hee has run away from her house. Elsewhere, Soon Chon's mother, Soon Hee, works at a diner and sees the news of Jin Sog and his family's death. Suddenly, Soon Chon's older sister, Soon Ah, calls her mother and informs her that debt collectors are at their house to collect rent. Soon he immediately returned home and tried talking to some debt collectors. Meanwhile, Lee Chol, Soon Chon's father, who is being sought by debt collectors, is hiding in the corner of the house. He is a comic artist who is no longer popular, so his income is unstable. Sometime later, Soon Chon comes home and tells the debt collectors where his father is hiding. Then he tells his father to take responsibility and solve the debt problem. At night, Lee Chol was seen drawing comics online even though until now, no comic publishers were interested in his comics. At Tae Young's house, he is supposed to study various reports from his father's company, and instead, he admires Lee Chol's comic stories. Sometime later, Hyun Do arrives to check on him. Because of this, Tae Young panicked so much that he had to take medicine to calm himself down. Meanwhile, Hyun Do, who has seen Tae Young's study results, is very disappointed with his son and thinks that he cannot use the time he has to study and show his best abilities. A few days later, Soon Chon is now seen going to Tae Young's house to hand over Jong Goon's schoolwork, which he usually does. At the same time, at Tae Yong's house, some of Soon Chon's classmates are gathering and enjoying the piano playing of Tae Yong's stepmother, Yong Sin. On the way, Soon Chon notices a crystal ball belonging to an old woman selling antiques rolling towards him. While returning the crystal ball, he is attracted by a golden spoon the grandmother was selling for 30,000 won. She explains that the golden spoon can change his fortunes to become a rich man by using the spoon to eat three meals at the homes of rich people his age. Even though Soon Chon doesn't believe what she says, he still buys the golden spoon. When Soon Chon arrived at Tae Yong's house, he was amazed by how luxurious Tae Yong's house was, which was spacious and had many servants. Upon arriving at a room, Soon Chon saw his friends hanging out with Tae Yong. Young Shin, who first saw Soon Chon, was surprised that Tae Yong had friends from the lower classes. After Soon Chon gives Jong Goon an assignment, he deliberately embarrasses Soon Chon by paying him in front of everyone there. When Soon Chon is about to leave after finishing his assignment, Tae Yong invites him to lunch with them. At lunchtime, Soon Chon's friends belittled Soon Chon's father's work, who was an obscure comic artist. However, Tae Yong is very interested in his work because he likes reading comics online. Not long after, the food arrives, and Soon Chon uses the opportunity to prove the truth of the old antique dealer's story about the gold spoon he had bought. The next day, Soon Chon, who is researching various things about the Dosan Group, sees Tae Yong, who looks frustrated while learning about company development and investment. Then Soon Chon approached him and helped him make a report to give to his father. 
His friends are surprised by Tae Young's closeness to Soon Chon, who has a different social status. However, Soon Chon's intelligence turns out to be able to help him complete the report. Even Hyun Do is impressed by the report his son gave him. Then Tae Young invites Soon Chon to eat at a fancy restaurant and transfers some money to him as a token of gratitude. On the other hand, Yo Jin worries that Soon Chon is taking advantage of Tae Young's kindness to make money. However, Tae Young thinks Soon Chon is sincere about helping him and understands the boundaries of hanging out with him. Yo Jin then talks about Ju Hee, who was expelled from school in England after getting into trouble. At the convenience store, Ju Hee is now seen chatting with Soon Chon, and she just found out that Soon Chon attends a prestigious school. He explains that he entered the school through a scholarship. Meanwhile, Ju Hee is forced to lie when he asks about her school. She says that she just got kicked out of her school after fighting with the bullies at her school. Not long after, the convenience store owner tells Soon Chon that his friend wants to meet him. Upon leaving, he saw Tae Yong waiting for him and gave him some money. Soon Chon thinks that Tae Yong is overdoing it, but he forces Soon Chon not to reject his good intentions as a friend. However, he doesn't think Tae Yong wants to be friends with him. At the convenience store, Ju Hee is very surprised after seeing Soon Chon meet Tae Yong, who she knows. After meeting Soon Chon, Tae Yong is back home, and on the way, he feels very jealous of Soon Chon's life, which is so free because his life has been arranged with various schedules that keep him very busy. Arriving at his room, Tae Yong seemed to be missing his biological mother, and he could only stare at a photo of his mother. Meanwhile, Soon Chon invites Ju Hee to dinner after seeing her complaining about being tired after work. Then they chat, and Ju Hee notices that Soon Chon is affectionate even though he seems cold. She is also impressed with Soon Chon, who is trying to help his family's finances. Upon hearing that, Soon Chon said that he did it for his mother and aspired to be rich so he could be happy and provide an apartment for his mother. The next day, the school announced the list of the best students who could enter the university without taking the test. Soon Chon is very happy because he is on the list of selected students. Meanwhile, Jong Goon, who was not selected, became very angry and started beating Soon Chon so that he would give Jong Goon his quota but he refuses Jong Goon's request, thus making himself even more battered. When Soon Chon returns to class, he's so angry he throws his bag on the floor. Seeing his golden spoon thrown out of his bag, he remembers something about the gold spoon, so he goes to Tae Yong's house to submit an investment report that he's been working on. Soon Chon, who is still curious about the magic of the spoon, then asks Tae Yong to give him a bowl of noodles and argues that he is hungry. But before he could eat the noodles, Hon Do came, making Tae Yong immediately take him out of there. Unbeknownst to Tae Yong, Soon Chon returns to the dining table and eats the noodles using his golden spoon. Suddenly Hyun Do and his wife come and catch Soon Chon eating the noodles. Soon Chon, who feels embarrassed, finally apologizes and leaves that house. On the way home, Soon Chon realizes he is very stupid and throws his gold spoon in the trash because he is disappointed that he didn't get the magic spoon. On the other hand, Jong Goon calls Hyun Do and tells him that Soon Chon has been helping his son, Tae Yong, complete all the company reports that he gave. Hearing this, Hyun Do is so shocked and angry that he calls Tae Yong and plans to punish him by sending him to study abroad. As Tae Yong no longer wants to experience the events of his childhood in America that traumatized him, he finally begs his father not to send him overseas and is willing to do whatever it takes to make amends. Hyun Do agrees and asks him to kick Soon Chon out of school. Under pressure from his father, Tae Yong and his stepmother come to school the next day and report Soon Chon's fake blackmail. With fake evidence fabricated, Soon Chon and his parents are summoned to the principal's office, and he threatens to be expelled from the school. Soon Chon explains that all the money he received was voluntary by Tae Yong. However, Tae Yong doesn't defend him, and instead, he cornered Soon Chon. After the meeting, Lee Chol seemed to kneel in front of Tae Yong so that he would forgive his son. On the other hand, that day was Ju Hee's first day of school at that place. Many of her friends were amazed by her entry into the school because she was known as the daughter of a famous TV station entrepreneur. She also seems friendly with Yo Jin, who previously attended the same middle school. Sometime later, Ju Hee, who saw the students crowding around, became curious until she saw Lee Chol kneeling in front of Tae Yong to apologize for Soon Chon's mistake. She feels something is wrong with this incident because she knows that Soon Chon is a good young man and can't possibly blackmail Tae Yong. At night, when it rains, Soon Chon asks Tae Yong to meet by the lake to ask why Tae Yong did this to him until Tae Yong admits that he had to lie because his father put pressure on him. As it turned out, Soon Chon had recorded all the conversations between them and planned to provide evidence of the recording to the school. Knowing that Tae Yong panics, so he tries to snatch the tape evidence, causing them to fight, and Soon Chon falls into the lake. Tae Yong, who originally intended to call the police for help, suddenly discouraged him because if Soon Chon was found, he would get into even bigger trouble. Because of that, he decides to leave the place, leaving Soon Chon, who might drown. 
At the same time, Soon Chon begins to lose consciousness but suddenly remembers the chance he had to use the golden spoon, so he tries to save himself by swimming to the lake's surface. He finally survives and rushes off to find the gold spoon he had thrown in the trash. After that, Soon Chon heads to Taeyong's house and meets Hyun Do to give him food as a last request before getting kicked out of school. Hyun Do then agreed to this and invited him to eat the food served. Without hesitation, Soon Chon devours the food using his golden spoon. Meanwhile, Hyun Do only watches him eat from his seat. On the other hand, Taeyong, who is on his way home, feels guilty about Soon Chon, so he asks his driver, Moonkey, to pull over. Then he walks back towards the lake to save Soon Chon. At Taeyong's house, Soon Chon, who has finished his meal, hopes for a miracle from the golden spoon. To be sure, he calls Hyun Do daddy, but Hyun Do has no reaction, so he apologizes and plans to return home, thinking he's failed. After that, Juhi comes to Taeyong's place to ask for an explanation about Soon Chon's case. Juhi, known as Taeyong's fiance, was invited in by the maids. Just before Soon Chon left, suddenly Juhi approached him and slapped him while calling Taeyong's name to him. Yondo, who was still there, approached and asked her what his son had been doing. Hearing this, Soon Chon finally realized that everyone had thought of him as Taeyong, and his life had switched with Taeyong, just as he had always wanted. Juhi, who saw Hyondo, immediately greeted him after not visiting his house for a long time. She explains that she just wanted to convince Taeyong of slandering Soon Chon. Not long after, Young Sin arrives and tells Hyondo that the police are looking for Taeyong to investigate the disappearance of a student named Soon Chon around the lake. Hearing that, Hyondo immediately contacted his attorney, Mr. Go, to accompany his son during the investigation process. At the police station, Soon Chon, now known as Taeyong, then explained that he only had a fight with his friend by the lake. On the other hand, Mr. Go tries to help his client so that the police don't ask his excessive client questions. The cop then provides a tape of Taeyong trying to save Soon Chon before he falls into the lake. Soon Chon, who saw the tape, was happy because even in the tape, he had swapped places with Taeyong. On the other hand, a police officer overseeing the investigation process receives a call from someone asking the police to take good care of the case. Meanwhile, around the lake, the police search for Soon Chon's whereabouts. His family panicked after receiving news of his disappearance, then rushed to the police station to inquire about his whereabouts. At the police station, Soon Chon sees his family, who now think of him as Taeyong. Outside the police station, Moonki meets Soon Chon with a concerned look because earlier, his master had suddenly stepped out of the car. Using Moonki's cell phone, Soon Chon tries to reach his cell phone, which was previously dropped around the lake. It looks like someone wearing a raincoat answered the phone without saying anything. Not long after, Soon Chon sees his family coming out of the police station after they get word that their son has been found. His family then headed to the hospital and met their son, who was none other than Taeyong, who is now considered Soon Chon by everyone. When Taeyong woke up, he saw a family waiting for him, and a woman who claimed to be his mother was beside him. At the same time, Soon Chon rushes to the hospital and looks for Taeyong. Shortly after that, Taeyong runs into Soon Chon in the hospital hallway and calls him Soon Chon when everyone calls him Taeyong. Upon hearing that, Soon Chon was shocked and wondered if Taeyong had realized their lives had been switched. On the other hand, Soong Ah, who recognizes Taeyong as Soong Chon, feels something strange about his brother for calling someone else himself. After visiting Taeyong, Soong Chon immediately asked Hyun Do to withdraw the blackmail report that was reported to the school so that he would not be expelled. In his study, Hyun Do then orders his men to look for witnesses who have taken photos of his son at the lake to ensure his son doesn't get into trouble. When he returns to Taeyong's house, Soong Chon is stunned by the luxury that Taeyong has been enjoying. He then acts like a boss so no one suspects him. Soon after, he finally meets Moonkey, who hands over the house plans and a list of the employees who work at his house. Moonkey is quite surprised by his different attitude, but he suspects that Taeyong has changed a little because he had a hard day. As Moonkey leaves, Soong Chon admires Taeyong's luxurious room and sees that his pictures have turned into him. Examining the details of the golden spoon, Soong Chon notices the 30 on the handle of the golden spoon turning to 29 when the clock strikes 12 at night. He quickly realizes that this is the number of days left for him to return to being poor Soon Chon. The next day, Soon Chon leaves for school as Taeyong. However, he is still uncomfortable being friends with Jong Goon and his snobbish group. That day, he finds out that Ju Hee is the daughter of the owner of a well-known TV station. Moments later, Soon Chon is summoned by the principal to discuss the blackmail issue from the other day. During the meeting, he finds out that the principal and Mrs. Kim already know that Taeyong deliberately framed him so that Soon Chon was expelled from school. During a break, John Goon and his gang continue bullying a school student. Then Soon Chon punches him and defends the male student he bullied. John Goon, who feels he has less power, cannot fight Soon Chon, who has now become Taeyong. Even Soon Chon gives his phone number to the bullied student and asks the student to contact him if John Goon bothers him again. 
Zhang Gun himself is upset and surprised that the Taeyong he knows has changed. Meanwhile, Zhu He, who sees Soon Chon as Taeyong, takes him to the school's roof and asks him to stop bothering Soon Chon. At that time, Soon Chon realized that Zhu He was so considerate and cared for him. After Zhu He left, Yo Jin approached Soon Chon and revealed that she was still upset because, previously, he had called her a lowly woman. Not only that, but she also told him that Zhu He was the cause of a student's death in middle school, but Soon Chon didn't seem to care about it and left. Meanwhile, when Taeyong at Soon Chon's house wakes up, he suddenly remembers the dinner schedule with his father. Seeing this, Lee Chol and his wife tried to calm him and asked him to rest again. On the other hand, Soon Chon seems to be trying to follow Hyun Do's strict self-discipline. Hyun Do is also known as a perfectionist, so he tries not to make mistakes in every report he makes to Hyun Do. After becoming Taeyong, Soon Chon bought some expensive things to give to his family. Whereas Taeyong, who has lived to be Soon Chon, actually likes comics made by Lee Chol, which surprises Soon Chon's real family because he previously thought his father's comics were not interesting. Soon La then asked her parents if her brother is now forgetful after an accident. After dinner was ready, Taeyong, who initially underestimated the food served, became very hungry and said that Soon Chon's mother's cooking was the most delicious food he had ever eaten. Not long after finishing dinner, the Huang family's servants came to Soon Chon's family's house and gave them gifts as an apology. Elsewhere, before having dinner with his son, Hyun Do reminds him not to waste money and hopes that Taeyong can become someone who is not affected by money. Sometime later, at dinner, it turns out that Hyun Do invited Ju He and her father, Na Song Guk, to join, so Soon Chon finds out that Ju He is Taeyong's fiance. Ju He reveals that she wanted to end her engagement with Taeyong because she wanted to be free to live her life while still in school. After she and her father arrived home, her older stepbrother, Gum Sog, was angry with her because his company was threatened with bankruptcy after Hyun Do cancelled his investment in his company after she broke off her engagement with Taeyong. However, Ju He's father tries to mediate their problems and tells Ju He to reconsider her decision before ending her engagement with Taeyong. Meanwhile, when Soong Chon returns to his room, he is surprised to see Yong Sin searching his room. Yong Sin, who was caught, then reasoned that she only wanted to give him school exam materials. After Yong Sin left, Soon Chon immediately looked for his gold spoon and accidentally found a photo of Taeyong with his biological mother. At his house, Jong Goon is being beaten by his father after his father finds out that he cheated at school and failed to make it to the top student list. He suspects Soon Chon has complained about it, so he plans to teach Soon Chon a lesson. The next morning, Soon Ah tries to prevent her mother from returning all the luxury items they received last night. However, because her father and brother agreed to return the item, she gave up and handed over the luxury item to her mother. After breakfast, Taeyong said goodbye to Soon Chon's father to go to school. Lee Chol then gives pocket money which, according to Taeyong, is very little. Despite that, Taeyong thanks him and goes to school walking. When he was about to return home, Lee Chol felt sorry because he had not provided a decent life for his family all this time, so when he saw a construction vacancy flyer, he took the flyer. Afterward, Soon Hye meets Soon Chon at a restaurant and returns all the luxury items given to her family the night before. Even though at that time, Soon Chon, now a rich man, had prepared a check to pay off all his family's debts. But Soon Hye refused the gift, said that money could not buy her family's pride, and asked him to stay away from her family. Soon Chon is speechless because he knows his mother doesn't want to take advantage of other people's kindness. At school, the return of Taeyong, who has become Soon Chon, makes his friends happy. Ju He also looks happy because it's been a while since they saw each other. Then, after school, she invites Taeyong to sit in a park to chat. Sometime later, Jong Goon and his group come to Taeyong to ask him to go to his house. Arriving at his house, Jong Goon and his group immediately beat Taeyong in black and blue. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Hyun Do is seen signing a document related to Taeyong. Sometime later, Ju He, who was in a columbarium, did not realize that a mysterious man had been watching her movements. Concurrently, Soon Chon comes to the columbarium and rushes to Jean Sog's ashes to pay tribute to his best friend. Moments later, Soon Chon gets a call from his friend that Jong Goon has taken Taeyong away. Hearing the news, he immediately went to Jong Goon's house because he knew Taeyong was in danger. After Soon Chon gets to Jong Goon's house, he starts beating up Jong Goon, so Jong Goon doesn't bother Taeyong anymore. Then he uses Jong Goon's father's gun to scare Jong Goon. Moonkey, who was waiting outside, suddenly heard gunshots from inside Jong Goon's house. Not long after the gunshots, Soon Chon heads to Hyun Do's office to tell him what he just did at Jong Goon's house. Because Hyun Do is in a meeting, finally, Soon Chon waits for him in his study and reads the will, which states that all of his assets will not be passed on to Taeyong. When Hyun Do walks into his study, Soon Chon announces that he's caused a problem and tells Hyun Do not to worry about the mess he caused. Shortly after that, Jong Goon's father suddenly calls Hyun Do, just as Soon Chon had expected. Then he answered the phone according to his son's request. 
Soon Chon then visits Jong Goon, who is hospitalized because of an injured hand. Jong Goon's mother was angry with him for injuring her son. However, she pauses after hearing Soon Chon tell her that he didn't shoot Jong Goon and that Jong Goon only dislocated his hand after falling from the shock of the shot he fired. Soon Chon then mentions that Jong Goon often bullies at school, so he wants to teach Jong Goon a lesson. If they want to dispute the shooting incident, he threatens to reveal to the police that Jong Goon's father illegally owned a gun. Soon after, Soon Chon drives Tae Yong home after seeing that he is scared. Moonkey, who notices Tae Yong's habit of biting his nails, reminds him of his young master's habit when he is scared. Soon Chon's kindness to Tae Yong now makes him feel indebted. But Soon Chon explains that he feels guilty that Tae Yong had to take his place and had been beaten up by Jong Goon. When Tae Yong arrives at Soon Chon's family's house, the landlord returns and kicks out Soon Chon's family because they have been in arrears for three months. Lee Chol then tried to talk to the debt collectors so that he and his family were allowed to stay there and would repay the rent. In fact, he was willing to clean the shoes of the man who owned the house for 20,000 won. From a distance, Soon Chon sees Lee Chol cleaning the shoes of the owner of the house, which embarrasses him, and he leaves. On the way home, Soon Chon thinks that switching lives is the right decision because he is ashamed to have such a useless father. On top of that, he has to think of a way to change Hyun Do's will. At the convenience store, Ju Hee is seen in a hurry because she arrived late. Meanwhile, the man who followed her to the columbarium was seen across from the convenience store and seemed to hate Ju Hee. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Jong Goon is so upset by the news that the Dosen group's fortunes are steadily increasing that he turns off the television. Yo Jin, who was there, also seemed enthusiastic about discussing Tae Yong's birthday next week, so Jong Goon was even more annoyed. She also reveals that Tae Yong and Soon Chon were born on the same day, and she thinks it's a very strange coincidence between them. The next day, it turns out that Chol has to work as a laborer in an eviction project, so he has to face the residents who oppose evictions. The project manager also had time to rebuke Lee Chol, who looked nervous while carrying out the demolition. Lee Chol hides his new job and tells his wife that he works at a publishing house as a comic artist. Meanwhile, Soon Hee is currently trying to find a new place to live in preparation for when her family is forced to move from their current house. At night, Lee Chol seemed to be resting and accidentally met a man named Jong Wee Nam, who always followed Ju Hee. Wee Nam reportedly got out of prison a month after his life was shattered by losing his beloved daughter five years ago. Lee Chol finds Wee Nam's wallet with a photo of his daughter, but Wee Nam takes it immediately. One week later, Lee Chol finally gets paid and intends to buy a birthday cake for Soon Chon. Meanwhile, Soon Chon, who was at Tae Yong's house, received various luxurious gifts from Hyun Do's relatives and relations. Moonkey then carries a stock certificate to be given to Hyun Do at his birthday party. Meanwhile, Ju Hee seems to be looking for the address of Soon Chon's family's house until finally, she asks the old woman who sells antiques. She doesn't think the old woman knows Soon Chon and gives directions to Soon Chon's family house. Not only that, but the old lady also asks Ju Hee to give a letter to Soon Chon's friend named Tae Yong. Then she received the letter without any suspicion. At Soon Chon's family home, Soon Hee is seen cooking seaweed soup for her son's birthday. Even though it was foreign to Tae Yong, who never ate seaweed soup on his birthday, he is now very grateful to have a mother who always loves him. Even he refuses Soon Hee's money because getting a mother's love is his most valuable thing. Soon Hee, who heard that was very happy because she thought that her son would ignore her after growing up. Suddenly, they were surprised by the arrival of Ju Hee, who wished him a birthday and gave him a present. On the other hand, Soon Chon, who has now become Tae Yong, seems to be enjoying a lavish birthday party with Hyun Do's family and close relations. He presents Hyun Do with a stock certificate from the proceeds of his pocket money. Seeing his son getting interested in business, Hyun Do felt proud. Song Guk is also surprised by the change in Tae Yong's demeanor, which he used to know is lazy. Shortly after, Song Guk calls Ju Hee to ask her to come to Tae Yong's birthday party. Soon Chon then appears to be greeting all of Hyun Do's corporate relations guests, as he checks the names of the list of businessmen he put together to study earlier. Not long after, Yo Jin approached Soon Chon because she felt that the Tae Yong she knew was very different because she greeted businessmen by their full names and even prepared a gift for his father. Because it was so strange, Yo Jin wondered why Tae Yong was now inviting his schoolmates who were not close friends. On the other hand, Ju Hee, constantly pressured by her father, finally came to the birthday party. When she got there, Ju Hee was surprised because Tae Yong, whom she knew as Soon Chon, was also there. Sometime after, Yong Sin asked the fake Tae Yong to entertain the invitees by playing the piano. Soon Chon panics because he doesn't know how to play the piano. However, suddenly Tae Yong, now known as Soon Chon, started playing the piano, which amazed everyone because his playing technique was the same as the real Tae Yong's. At that moment, Soon Chon realizes that even though his and Tae Yong's fortunes have been exchanged, their talents and habits cannot change. Furthermore, Soon Chon finds a letter from an old antique dealer to Ju Hee. 
After opening the letter, he is very surprised because, under the rule of the Golden Spoon, Soon Chon and Taeyong can return to their real lives if they meet their parents for birthdays. Realizing that his plan could fail if Taeyong meets Hyondo, Soon Chon immediately looks for Taeyong's whereabouts. Finally, Soon Chon spots Taeyong at the elevator. At the same time, Hyondo is also heading for the elevator, so he tries to distract his father by hugging him and saying that he is very grateful to be born as his only son. When he found out Taeyong had left, Soon Chon finally went with Hyondo. At night Ju he feels weird with Soon Chon now because he asked her to help him with the assignment. Not only that but she is also surprised because Soon Chon likes wine and can play the piano like Taeyong. Not long after, her father comes and reminds Ju he not to hang out with Soon Chon and asks her to choose friends who are on the same level as their family. Suddenly, Song Guk brings up a girl named Nara, Ju He's friend from a poor family who was caught stealing her expensive watch in middle school. Ju He is upset because her father brings up the matter even though Nara has passed away. At home, Young Sin reveals that she was very annoyed by Soon Chon's piano playing at Tae Young's birthday party. She says that she doesn't like Tae Young being so close to Soon Chon. Young Do then talks about a will, and he says that the heir to his company doesn't have to be his son but someone who can protect his wealth and the Dosen group. After the conversation is over, Young Sin calls someone. Meanwhile, Soon Chon, who just arrived at his room, looks worried because the letter about the gold spoon from the old woman who sells antiques has disappeared. Apparently, the letter fell at the party when he was busy looking for Tae Young. The next day, Soon Chon visits Ju Hee to ask where she met the old woman selling antiques. Ju Hee then tells how she met the old lady before meeting his family. Hearing this, Soon Chon tries to prevent Ju Hee from meeting his poor family. However, she looks irritated and demands that Soon Chon, whom she knows as Taeyong, not insult Soon Chon's family because she likes Soon Chon no matter what. Hearing that, he becomes uncomfortable hearing her reveal this. At Soon Chon's family house, Taeyong finds the birthday cake Lee Chol left for him. He left a message saying sorry that he couldn't accompany his son on his birthday. In the message, he also revealed that he would try to earn money so that his kids' lives wouldn't be difficult. At night, Moonkey reveals that Soon Chon's family is in danger of being evicted if they don't pay their rent soon. As it turns out, Soon Chon has thought of a way to help his family. Moonkey is relieved that his young master has become wiser and even managed to overcome his trauma from events in America. Hearing that, Soon Chon becomes curious about what happened to Taeyong in America five years ago. Moreover, one of the maids at the Huang family house, Miss Gong, always gives him medicine daily. On the other hand, Young Sin tries to persuade Miss Gon to help her find someone who can keep an eye on Taeyong because she is very worried about his current state. A few days later, Moonkey finally gets some information about An Muin, the rent collector who used to come to Soon Chon's family's house. An Muin and his group turned out to be a gangster group in the area. With the crime evidence that Moonkey and Soon Chon have, they head to An Muin's property office to negotiate. However, their arrival was not welcomed, so Moonkey, proficient in martial arts, had to fight and defeat all the gangsters. Finally, Muin agrees to follow Soon Chon's orders so that his business is not reported to the police. Not long after, Soon Chon and Moonkey watch as Muin and some of his men come to Soon Chon's family's house to apologize. Muin then makes concessions to Soon Chon's family to pay the rent for the house. Soon Chon feels reassured because his family won't find out that he helped them. On the way home, Soon Chon feels guilty about his family because he traded his parents' life and affection to enjoy the Taeyong family's wealth. Elsewhere, a homeless woman is seen looking for an old lady who sells antiques. The woman apparently wanted to return the golden spoon she had used before. The next day, at school, Soon Chon becomes jealous after seeing how close Ju Hee and Tae Yong are now. At night, Soon Chon also comes around the convenience store while looking at Ju Hee, who is working. Then he becomes suspicious of Wee Nam watching Ju Hee while drunk. When Ju Hee walks home after work, Wee Nam seems to follow her and tries to hurt her. So, he wants revenge for the death of his daughter, Nara. He wants to threaten Ju Hee's father to give him money as compensation for his daughter's death. Meanwhile, Soon Chon, concerned about Ju Hee's safety, keeps dialing her number but doesn't pick up. Then he rushes after Ju Hee because he is afraid that she will be hurt by the man watching her in front of the convenience store. After Soon Chon heard Ju Hee's screams, he rushed to her aid and tried to catch Wee Nam. Unfortunately, his attempt failed after Wee Nam managed to knock him down, and Wee Nam finally ran away from there. Ju Hee then tells Soon Chon that the man is Nara's father, who wants revenge because his daughter was expelled from school after being caught stealing her watch, even though the watch had been returned. At that time, Ju Hee could not forgive Nara because the watch Nara took was a gift from her late mother. After being expelled from school, it was reported that Nara had leukemia and died. Until now, Ju Hee still hasn't forgiven herself and regrets why she didn't forgive Nara's mistake at that time. Soon Chon tries to calm her and convince her that Nara's death is not her fault. Some time passes, and now Soon Chon tries to win Hyun Do's heart so that his current father is willing to change his will. He begs Hyun Do to change the will's contents and plans to attend the shareholders' meeting. 
He assures Hyeondo he will do his best to inherit the Dosen group. Hyeondo looks pleased that the will he left on his desk could change Young's behavior. One day, Soon Chon is in class and accidentally finds a note from the Gold Spoon saleswoman in his book. Not long after, he received a message on his cell phone from an unknown number. In the message, the sender said he knew he was not the real Young. He is shocked that someone already knows his secret. He suspects his friends in his class, but this is not proven. Moments later, Young enters while playing on his cell phone. However, Soon Chon's suspicions were not proven because Young's cell phone did not ring when he called the number. It was Ju He's cell phone that rang after receiving an incoming call. During break time, Soon Chon, who rechecks the letter, is surprised because the contents of the letter are not there. When he visits one of his friends, his friend admits that he found the envelope empty at a previous birthday party and put it in Soon Chon's textbook. Soon Chon suspects that one of his friends is switching places like him using a golden spoon, and he now suspects Ju He of being too friendly to others, even though she's from a rich family. He becomes even more suspicious of her, especially after learning about her and Nara's past. She is also the person who delivered the letter. To confirm this, Soon Chon secretly searches Ju He's bag and looks for her cell phone. On the other hand, Ju He is with Yo Jin, who warns her to stay away from Tae Young. While listening to Yo Jin's request, Ju He suddenly remembered that her phone had been left behind in class, so she rushed back to class. Arriving at class, she is surprised to see Soon Chon, who plays Tae Young, rummaging through her bag. Soon Chon immediately explains that he wants to make sure who called Ju He before class started. Then she points out that her father called her this morning, and then he apologizes. When Soon Chon sits in the bleachers at the sports field, he goes back to reading the message sent to him. Suddenly, Tae Young appears and reads the message until he asks if Tae Young sent the message. When Soon Chon asks, Tae Young says he didn't send the message. At the same time, he warns Soon Chon not to go near Ju He. At dinner, Young Sin, eating with Soon Chon, suggests that he focuses more on studying than taking care of the company's shareholder meeting. However, he doesn't care what Young Sin says and just accepts the suggestion. However, she suddenly feels strange when she learns that her stepson is now consuming coffee, which Young avoided so much before. Sometime later, Soon Chon calls Ju He to the police station because Wee Nam has been caught. The police report he was reported by a student named Yo Jin for sneaking into her house to express his longing for his late daughter, Nara. Ju He explains that the Nara family has rented a room at Yo Jin's house for several years. Soon Chon, who wants to investigate Nara's death, finally invites Yo Jin to the columbarium. He suspects that Yo Jin is Nara who is changing lives using a golden spoon because, according to Ju He's story, Yo Jin was known to be sick since middle school. After arriving at the columbarium, Soon Chon asks Yo Jin about Nara. Yo Jin admits that she is not very close to Nara even though Nara's family has rented a room at her house. Surprisingly, Yo Jin suddenly looks sad when Soon Chon asks why she reported Wee Nam to the police station. She admits that Wee Nam was a father who often abused Nara when she was still alive. When Yo Jin was about to leave the venue, her steps suddenly stopped after Soon Chon called her as Nara. She seems annoyed that he called her Nara and accuses him of being the one who sent her mysterious messages. Meanwhile, Ju He is looking at a picture of herself with Yo Jin and Nara in middle school. Soon after, she received a message stating she was not the real Ju He. The next day, Tae Yong and his friends also get a similar message. Finally, Jong Goon admits that he deliberately sent the message to his classmates as a joke using his mother's number to prank all his classmates. Not long after, Jong Goon saw Tae Yong eating ice cream using an ordinary spoon, so he taunted Tae Yong, now known as Soon Chon, for not using a golden spoon. On the other hand, Soon Chon looks worried at Jong Goon's question. As for Tae Yong, even though he had difficulty remembering, he got memory that he had used the golden spoon. When eating with Soon Chon's family, Tae Young asks Soon Hee and Soon Ah for the gold spoon, but they never know about the gold spoon he is referring to. Then he tried to find a gold spoon in his room, and he found nothing until he was sure that the gold spoon was left in his old house. The following day, Soon Chon, accompanied by Moon Ki, goes to meet On Muin to buy an apartment for his real family because now there are only seven days left to change lives. When they left the place, without them knowing it, someone was spying on them and reported this to Young Sin, who was now waiting for someone to arrive. When he was about to go home, Soon Chon's journey was hampered by a demonstration by the victims of the evictions in the middle of the road. He was surprised to see his real father, Lee Chol, who was one of the eviction workers there, so he stopped the car and came out to meet Lee Chol. Soon Chon then approaches Lee Chol, who is being treated harshly by his superiors. Lee Chol saw him, who he knew as Tae Young, and asked Soon Chon to keep a secret from his family. Soon Chon becomes very sad to see his father working as a laborer. He feels sorry for and disappointed with his father's attitude. Annoyed with his father, Soon Chon starts to smile after Ju He invites him to dinner together. Then she treated him with her wages after working at the convenience store as a thank you because Soon Chon, known as Tae Yong, had helped her a lot all this time. 
Taeyong, whom Ju He knows, is now more mature, and from their conversation, Soon Chon learns that five years ago, Taeyong experienced a traumatic shooting incident in America that caused him to have a panic disorder. Then they continue their chat over coffee in the garden and discuss their engagement. Suddenly, Ju He reveals that it's best to cancel the engagement after they turn 20. However, Soon Chon refuses because he likes her and will try to win her heart. Meanwhile, Taeyong visits the Huang family's house to find out if his gold spoon was left there. There, he meets Yong Sin and begs her to allow him to wait until Soon Chon, also known as Taeyong, returns. When Yong Sin accompanies Taeyong, she is very surprised because the young man she knows as Soon Chon, who is in front of her, has a taste for drinks, is fluent in French, and has the exact same talent for playing the piano as Taeyong. Yong Sin then offered to have dinner together, but Taeyong refused because he was not used to eating at other people's homes, so she was surprised because previously Soon Chon, whom she knew, had eaten several times at that house. Finally, Taeyong, who thinks he is Soon Chon, waits in Taeyong's room and starts looking for his gold spoon until he finds a photo of his biological mother that he no longer recognizes. On the other hand, Soon Chon, who knew that Taeyong was already in his room, panicked and immediately headed to his room. He was angry and snatched the gold spoon held by Taeyong. He scolds Taeyong for searching for other people's belongings without permission. However, Taeyong thinks Soon Chon is overreacting over trivial matters, so he chooses to leave. At the front of the house, Taeyong meets Hyun Do, who causes his panic attack to flare up, so he immediately takes his leave. On the way home, his panic attacks worsen, and he tries to contact Lee Chol, currently at work. Soon after, Lee Chol went to meet him, who was already at a pedestrian bridge. Seeing his son lying helpless, Lee Chol tried to help him regulate his breathing so he could breathe. When together with Hyun Do, Yong Sin tells about Soon Chon's behavior which is very similar to Taeyong. She provides proof of purchasing an apartment in Taeyong's name, which makes her worry that Soon Chon is taking advantage of Taeyong. Hearing this, Hyun Do calls Moon Ki and talks about the progress of the search for witnesses to the fight at the lake. Moon Ki reports that the police have had difficulty finding the witness until now. From this conversation, he concludes that Moon Ki is hiding the friendship between Taeyong and Soon Chon because Moon Ki did not report to him about buying an apartment in Taeyong's name. At morning, Yo Jin is watching Wee Nam, who will be transferred to prison, and she calls him daddy. As it turns out, Soon Chon's suspicion that Yo Jin was a gold spoon user was correct. Then she turns out to be a witness who saw Soon Chon and Taeyong fight at the lake some time ago. She throws Soon Chon's cell phone into the lake and takes Taeyong's cell phone, so there is no evidence at the crime scene. Meanwhile, at Hyun Do's house, Yong Sin's younger brother Jun Tae has returned from America and greets Hyun Do and Soon Chon. However, Hyun Do doesn't seem to like him that much. On another occasion, Soon Chon found out that Jun Tae had a bad temper because he strangled Soon Chon and reasoned that Soon Chon was being rude by looking directly at him. Soon Chon realizes that apart from his father, Tae Yong is also under pressure from his abusive uncle. Because of this, he intends to return to his old house. However, seeing that his family seems fine without him, he decides to leave. Meanwhile, Soon Ah tells her family that she was offered an apartment unit that Tae Yong's chauffeur, Moon Ki, can rent cheaply. Upon hearing that, Tae Yong also feels suspicious that Moon Ki did this on the orders of his young master, Soon Chon, who is now known as Tae Yong. On the other hand, Lee Chol really admires Tae Yong's drawing talent. A few days later, he returned to work on the demolition project. However, today's project was marred by riots because residents rejected the eviction and demonstrated anarchically, injuring the eviction workers, including him. At another place, Soon Chon is now getting ready to go to school while observing the number of his gold spoon, which turns out that today is the last day he exchanges fortunes with Tae Yong. While at school, he meets Tae Yong, and he is shocked when Tae Yong finds out that the apartment Moon Ki offered to his sister belongs to him. After Soon Chon thinks Tae Yong is naive for not wanting wealth, Tae Yong insists that he will not change his parents even though his parents are poor. Suddenly, Ju He arrives with Tae Yong's cell phone, which keeps ringing in the classroom. After learning that Lee Chol was in the hospital, they immediately headed for the hospital. After seeing his father, Soon Chon immediately approached and called Lee Chol as his father. Suddenly, Hyun Do appears behind the curtains, knowing that Soon Chon worries that people will know his secret. At another place, Yo Jin is seen looking at Soon Chon's missing letter and keeps it in the safe where she keeps her golden spoon. Several years ago, Yo Jin, who lived as Nara, had to live with the drunken and abusive Wee Nam while the real Yo Jin was suffering from leukemia. One day, Nara meets an old woman who sells gold spoons, and finally, her life is exchanged for Yo Jin's life, so Yo Jin, who is sickly, must die as Nara. In fact, Yo Jin's parents have forgotten her terminal illness, which suddenly recovered so that Nara can live as Yo Jin until now. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Soon Chon tries to make excuses so that Hyun Do isn't suspicious of him. He says he heard that Hyun Do was in the hospital and was worried that he thought it was him who was hospitalized. 
After Hyun Do takes him home, Soon Chom refuses and insists on staying there to build public opinion to improve the image of Hyun Do's company, especially since many reporters cover Lee Chol's incident. His wise attitude made Hyun Do and Mr. Go quite impressed by the change in Tae Yong they know now. With his current identity being Tae Yong, Soon Chon can't get too close to Lee Chol in front of his family. Suddenly, his condition became critical, so Lee Chol had to undergo surgery. Soon Chon thinks it's a punishment for him choosing to be rich and forgetting his family. A sad Soon Chon returns to the Hyun Do residence and tries to leave with some money. However, this was blocked by Jun Tae, and even Jun Tae took the gold spoon he had brought. Then he fought back, so the money he carried scattered to the floor. After fighting Jun Tae and taking his gold spoon, Soon Chon sees the old woman who sells gold spoons and asks her to help him return to his former life. The old woman says he must return to his old house and eat with the golden spoon. Then she says that they will see each other in one year, and he could get the chance to switch places again. However, he believes he doesn't want to become rich at the expense of his family. At the hospital, Lee Chol's surgery has been completed, and Soon Hee asks Tae Yong to return home. Tae Yong obeyed his mother, and when he was about to leave, he saw his mother's socks with holes, so he intended to buy new socks. Meanwhile, Soong Ah, who had just arrived home, was very surprised after seeing Soon Chon eating rice with outside dishes. Seeing her arrival, Soon Chon looks surprised, but she suddenly addresses him as Soon Chon, so he feels relieved. Seeing his brother crying, Soong Ah hugged Soon Chon and tried to calm him down. Meanwhile, Tae Yong had just bought socks and was confused about why Soon Chon was there. Soon Chon immediately went to the hospital and visited his father. He was hugging his mother while apologizing. Not long after, he came and looked very happy after knowing his father had regained consciousness. The next day, Ju He gives Soon Chon food and a motivational book which makes him happy because he got her attention with his real self. Elsewhere, Tae Yong has returned to his luxurious life and dreams of having breakfast with his mother. However, it was Moon Ki who came and woke him up. Tae Yong could not believe that his mother had died because he had recently felt a mother's love. At breakfast, Hyun Do asks about the apartment he bought earlier. When Jun Tae and Yong Sin accuse Soon Chon's family of taking advantage of his wealth, Tae Yong becomes angry and defends them. Finally, the apartment problem is now taken over by Hyun Do. After breakfast, Jun Tae seems irritated with Tae Yong, who dared to fight him. However, he does not resist when his uncle tries to use violence to hurt him. Luckily, Moonkey arrives, so Jun Tae leaves them. He can only do a little to help Tae Yong from Jun Tae because he wants something to do with Yong Sin. At that time, Moonkey apologized to Tae Yong because he couldn't keep the secret about buying the apartment. Meanwhile, Tae Yong is still trying to remember his reasons for buying the apartment and questions the socks he keeps in his trouser pockets. Turning to Soon Chon's family, now they have to face a new problem because the head of the contractor asked Lee Chol to cover the cost of repairing a damaged company car by 100 million won. At school, Yo Jin is curious that Soon Chon has been using the golden spoon for a month. Because of this, she sees Tae Yong and finds that their life has returned to normal. Meanwhile, Ju Hee, who is in class, tries to listen to the conversation of her friend, who is calling Soon Chon because he is having financial problems after the head of the contractor asks for compensation for the company car that was damaged due to the residents demonstration. In the toilet, Soon Hee was alone. She felt hopeless and cried in frustration because she had to involve her kids to pay off her debt. Not long after, she sees a pamphlet advertising the sale of organs for high fees. On the other hand, Soon Chon also plans to sell Tae Young's watch, which he still wears. After going to the watch shop, the owner kicks Soon Chon out and says the watch is fake. As it turns out, previously, Jun Tae had exchanged all of Tae Young's watches for counterfeit goods. A disappointed Soon Chon finally throws the watch in the trash. The next day, Soon Hee is seen having a medical examination before carrying out an operation to sell her kidney, so that her family would not become suspicious. Then she said she would go out of town for a week to borrow money from her friend. When Soon Hee was at the park and was on the phone with someone related to selling her kidney, Soon Chon overheard his mother's conversation, so he forbade her. He promises to try to find a way to repay the debt. Soon after, Soon Chon is now meeting with Hyun Do to borrow money. However, he can't give the money because Soon Chon has no bail. Moreover, Lee Chol's medical expenses have been covered by his company. On the other hand, Ju Hee plans to sell her luxury bags to help Soon Chon after her father refuses to give her the money. By evening, Ju Hee, who has earned money from selling the bags, plans to give the money to him. But at the same time, Yo Jin arrives and hands Soon Chon a check first. Yo Jin then hugs him, knowing that Ju Hee saw them. Sometime later, all the students have graduated from high school, and Tae Yong is seen treating his friends to drinks to celebrate graduation day. Ju Hee, who is there, doesn't seem to be enjoying the party much since Soon Chon isn't there. After the party, Yo Jin asks Soon Chon to pick her up so Ju Hee and her schoolmates think she is now close to him. However, he seems compelled to do so. Meanwhile, Tae Young, who knows Ju Hee is going home alone, chooses to accompany her home. On the way, he discusses their official engagement. 
Surprisingly, it turns out that Soon Chon and his family are now forced to obey Yo Jin's father's orders. Dong Pil, after receiving financial assistance to pay off their debts. Seeing her father treating them badly, Yo Jin was angry with him and said that she promised to marry Tae Yong. Hearing this, her father finally complied with her request to be kind to Soon Chon and his family. In his room, Soon Chon counts his savings as not enough to apply to a university. He has also thrown away his dream of becoming rich using a golden spoon after seeing the spoon he still keeps in his savings box. Meanwhile, Tae Yong is being visited by a psychiatrist helping him deal with anxiety disorders. The psychiatrist said that his condition has been much better in the past year. Tae Yong can now overcome his anxiety disorder without medication using a relaxation technique that someone taught him. Unfortunately, he doesn't remember that it was Lee Chol who had taught him the relaxation technique. At Tae Yong's residence, Juhi visits Yong Sin to congratulate Yong Sin's newly released new album. Moments later, Yo Jin comes with Soon Chon to congratulate Yong Sin. At that time, Soon Chon immediately said goodbye after seeing Ju He was there. Yo Jin and Soon Chon's closeness makes Young Sin wonder. However, she reveals that she has always considered Soon Chon as her chauffeur. Ju He then reprimands Yo Jin's attitude and asks her not to belittle Soon Chon in front of other people. Moreover, Yo Jin, whom Ju He used to know, was a good girl and never discriminated against friends. Yo Jin finally tells Ju He that Soon Chon's family has been living at her house all this time and says that Soon Chon is shameless because he is willing to do anything for money. Unexpectedly Soon Chon and Tae Yong came and overheard the conversation. Soon Chon finally admits that he chose to avoid Ju He because he, who liked her, felt he didn't deserve to be by her side. When Soon Chon leaves, Ju He tries to catch up with him and says she still likes him, no matter his state. Elsewhere, Hyun Do, playing golf, accidentally sees Song Guk and his daughter arguing over company matters. This is a consideration for Hyun Do to invest in Song Guk's company. One day Ju He meets Tae Yong, who wants to meet Soon Chon at Yo Jin's place. Unfortunately, now Soon Chon is with Yo Jin by the lake. From Yo Jin's confession, Soon Chon finally learns that she is Nara, who has used a golden spoon to change her destiny. Even though he previously lived life as Tae Yong, Soon Chon is determined not to use the golden spoon again. Suddenly, Yo Jin takes out Soon Chon's gold spoon and throws it into the lake. He is shocked and upset about what she did. Meanwhile, while waiting for Yo Jin, Tae Yong and Ju He accidentally find a gold spoon in Yo Jin's room. At the lakeside, Yo Jin admits that the spoon she just threw away was a fake because the real gold spoon was in her room. Seeing Soon Chon's reaction, who still wants to keep the gold spoon, Yo Jin offers a plan for him to use the gold spoon again and switch positions with Tae Yong, then marry her. Later, with the wealth they get, they can both enjoy. Hearing that, Soon Chon is annoyed by her idea, but she asks him to consider it. In Yo Jin's room, Tae Yong is curious about the golden spoon because Soon Chon has one too. Moments later, Tae Yong and Ju He are hosted by Dong Pil. They are shocked to see Soon Chon's parents working for Yo Jin's family to cook and clean the house without a salary because Soon Chon's family has borrowed money from Yo Jin's family to pay off debts. Tae Yong then reminds Dong Pil not to treat Soon Chon's family arbitrarily. Not long after, Yo Jin arrives, so Ju He tries to remind her that she can respect Soon Chon's family even though her family has money. However, Yo Jin reminds Ju He to make her think more about her father's company, which is about to go bankrupt. At the Dosen Group office, Song Guk and Goom Sog meet with Hyun Do because the Dosen Group has withdrawn investment in Song Guk's company. Hyun Do reasons that the Dosen Group has greatly helped so far, but Song Guk's company's decline was due to Goom Sok's incompetent leadership. Then Hyun Do asks Song Guk to hand over his company so it doesn't go bankrupt. However, Song Guk refused because he felt offended that he brought up something he had done when defending Tae Yong, who was in trouble when he was in America. Because of the argument, Hyun Do decides to call off Tae Yong and Ju He's engagement. That night, Ju He, who was at home, looked very worried about her father, who came home drunk. Song Guk says that her and Tae Yong's engagement has been called off, and he promises to find a replacement for Tae Yong with a better man. Meanwhile, Lee Chol and his wife are also currently fighting because Soon Hee is annoyed by her husband's behavior, who only drinks without thinking of a solution so that their family life is not always trampled on by Yo Jin's family. Hearing his parents fight, Soon Chon plans to do something. The next day, after seeing Yo Jin and her father leave, Soon Chon rushes into Yo Jin's room to find his golden spoon. Unfortunately, while Soon Chon is searching, Yo Jin returns to her room, causing them to fight. She again offers the golden spoon on the condition that Soon Chon must marry her after switching places with Tae Yong. Soon Chon, who didn't want to get caught up in the problem, left Yo Jin's room without bringing anything. A few days later, news of Song Guk's company going bankrupt spread, so Soon Chon asks Ju He to hang out with him and tries to cheer her up. Even though Ju He faces many problems, she doesn't worry as long as Soon Chon is by her side. On the other hand, Yo Jin asked her father to kick Soon Chon's family out of the house, hoping that Soon Chon would be even more desperate and fulfill her request. 
Dong Pil then asks Soon Chon's family to leave his house immediately if they can't pay off their debt within 10 days. In front of his children, Li Chol promises to find money to repay Dong Pil's debt and find a new place to live. On the other hand, Soong Ah is looking for loan money that he will later use to buy shares that can provide profits in a short time. One day, Taeyong finally discovered that his father had called off his engagement with Ju Hee. Hyun Do explains that the engagement is not financially beneficial for the Dosen group. Taeyong was disappointed with his father's attitude, who always thought about money, so he said that he would still fight for Ju Hee because she was the savior of his life. Unknowingly, Young Sin and Jun Tae eavesdrop on the conversation, so she asks Jun Tae to quickly enter the Hyun Do company so he can start controlling the wealth of the Dosen group. On the way, Tae Young is still thinking about Ju Hee. Suddenly, memories of events in America surfaced, making his anxiety disorder flare up. Then Moonkey immediately pulled over when he saw Tae Young, who was having shortness of breath. Meanwhile, Soon Hee is going somewhere with Dong Pil. Then he tries to seduce her and assumes her family debt is paid off if she is willing to do the unthinkable with him. As it turns out, Dong Pil has liked Soon Hee for so long that he keeps trying to persuade her. However, Soon Hee, who realized that the meeting was different from the original purpose, immediately refused and left him by bus. At the publisher's office, Lee Chol now has a job drawing adult comic stories. When he calls Soon Hee to tell her the news, she doesn't answer his calls, so he starts to worry and visits his wife's workplace. When he gets there, Lee Chol gets the info that Soon Hee is away, so he thinks his wife is looking for a loan from her friend. On the other hand, Soong Chon is now visiting Jean Sog's empty house. Suddenly, a homeless woman comes and breaks into Jean Sog's house. Soong Chon, who feels sorry, finally gives some money to the woman. At that time, he hears that the woman is looking for gold spoons and has been looking for the old lady selling gold spoons for years. After that, Soong Chon, in front of Yo Jin's house, accidentally saw Dong Pil seducing his mother, so he planned to teach Yo Jin's father a lesson. Suddenly, Yo Jin arrives and prevents him from getting involved in a more complicated matter, and he finally discourages this. Soong Chon, who is now frustrated, seems to be spending time drinking at a tavern. He started to regret that when he switched positions first, he didn't take Taeyong's original watch. Then he starts to think that if he had the chance to switch places, he wouldn't waste another chance. In fact, because he was drunk, Soong Chon seemed to see the old woman selling gold spoons in front of him who said he wanted to use gold spoons again. Meanwhile, Taeyong is searching the internet for information about a traumatic event when he attended school in America. Unable to get any information on the internet, Moonkey says that Yong Sin might still have a copy of the article related to the incident, so with his help, Taeyong finally manages to retrieve the copy without making Yong Sin suspicious. After getting the copy, he finds an article about a student named James. When the situation was safe, Taeyong asked Moonkey to find a reporter named Lee Chol Soon, who wrote the article. At the convenience store, Soon Chon, who is at work, is shocked by the news of the drop in the price of the stock he had previously invested in. He is very angry and thinks there is no other way to get money than trading his life with Taeyong. Soon after, Soon Chon immediately met Yo Jin, hanging out with her friends to ask for his golden spoon. At the same time, his family has been kicked out of Dong Pil's place, so they have to live separately temporarily. Even now, Soon Chon has got his golden spoon. He is still in a dilemma, so he goes to the church where Ju Hee used to worship. On the other hand, Ju Hee is angry with Song Gook because he handed over his shares to Goom Sog to sell to Jun Tae. Ju Hee thinks her father is too obsessed with money even though the family company is on the verge of going bankrupt. Due to the dispute, she decides to leave the house. After Tae Yong gets information that reporter Lee Chol Soong has worked at Song Gook's office, he finally goes to Song Gook's house and asks about the events that involved him in America. Then Song Gook gives Tae Yong a hard drive and tells him that James died because Tae Yong shot him. Hearing that, Taeyong is so shocked at this fact that he pushes Song Gook's body repeatedly against the wall and leaves the scene in a confused state of mind. Meanwhile, Juhi goes to church and meets Soon Chon there. He says he hopes Juhi will still like him even if he appears different. When she returned home, Juhi found her house dark, and no maids were there. Suddenly, she saw her father's blood on the floor. The next morning, Taeyong wakes up and tells his father that he had a dream about Song Gook's death. Hyun Do then asks him to forget about their meeting the night before. Taeyong, who doesn't remember anything, wonders if Song Gook's death had anything to do with him because he saw dried blood on his hands. When Taeyong went to Ju Hee's house to confirm this, he saw that many police officers had arrived. Question after question kept looming within him until he ran aimlessly and almost got hit by a car. Luckily, Yo Jin came to save Taeyong and tried reviving him to keep him alive. Yo Jin did that because she found out that Soong Chon was currently at Taeyong's house using his golden spoon. After successfully entering Taeyong's house, Soon Chon asked for food and started using his golden spoon until finally, their lives were switched again. Elsewhere, Ju Hee is devastated after her father's death. 
Not long after, the investigation team suddenly arrived, and it was revealed that it was Hyun Do's men who ordered the removal of evidence in the form of Tae Young's fingerprints and CCTV camera footage. The next day, the news of Song Gook spread in the media. Mr. Go also reports to Hyun Do that all matters have been resolved, and the police confirmed that Song Gook's death was caused by accident. Soon Chon, who has become Tae Young, comes to Hyun Do about the news of Song Gook's death. Soon after, Hyun Do reminds him that his son should forget about the incident, so Soon Chon suspects Song Gook's death is related to Tae Young. Meanwhile, when he met Young Sin, Soon Chon found out that Tae Young had come home drunk. On the other hand, a woman maid was seen cleaning up Tae Young's belongings and was asked to burn his bloodstained clothes. On the other hand, Soon Chon now looks at the golden spoon and finds out that the time of fate has turned into 10 years. Meanwhile, Hyun Do warns Moonkey for failing to protect Tae Young several times and asks him not to make the same mistake. While attending her father's funeral, Ju Hee thinks something is wrong with his death, but Goom Sog instead scolded her and asked her not to think things through. Soon Chon, who has become Tae Young, also comes to the funeral, and only Yo Jin knows his real identity there. However, Soon Chon is jealous of Tae Young again because now Ju Hee is closer to Tae Young than him. Then he leaves the funeral after an altercation and sues over Ju Hee's brother taking a stake in the funeral. Shortly after, Soon Chon finds out that Song Gook's company shares are being bought by Jun Tae and immediately orders Moonkey to find out where Jun Tae got the money. Apart from that, he also asks Moonkey to investigate Dong Pil's business. It doesn't take long for him to find out that Dong Pil's company has been doing tax evasion for years. Elsewhere, Soon Ah finally gets a promotion to move up in her workplace. Lee Chol just got a call from a famous comic company, and Soon Hee got a loan enough money to buy a house. From a distance, Soon Chon is determined to return with his family after he earns 100 billion. Knowing that the police were investigating the tax evasion case of her father's company, Yo Jin immediately realized that Soon Chon was behind it. She is angry because Soon Chon refuses to cooperate with her and still graze against Dong Pil, who kicked out his family. Meanwhile, Jun Tae, satisfied after he has succeeded in controlling part of Song Gook's company shares, informs Hyun Do of his achievement. At the same time, Soon Chon meets a man named Alex Bu, who financed Jun Tae's stock purchase. Then Soon Chon asks Alex to choose the more advantageous side since Jun Tae is only Hyun Do's brother in law, whereas he is Hyun Do's son who will become the heir to the Dosen Group company. Not long after, Jun Tae received news that Alex Bu had withdrawn his money, indicating that Alex was more in favor of Hyun Do's son. Elsewhere, Ju Hee, curious about her father's death, tries to ask the maid who used to work at their house about the last person her father met. However, the maid did not provide any information because she had been bribed by Mr. Go, not to mention Tae Yong's arrival. That night, Hyun Do has no idea that Soon Chon, now Tae Yong, can convince Alex Bu to withdraw his money and irritate Jun Tae. Then Soon Chon says he did it to reduce public suspicions over reports that Hyun Do caused Song Gook's company to go bankrupt. Seeing Tae Yong's attitude, which was strange again because he started discussing the company, made Yong Sin curious about what had happened to him. The next day, Ju Hee asks Hyun Do for help investigating her father's death, but Hyun Do gives her a check instead, and she flatly refuses. On the other hand, an angry Yo Jin is seen slapping Soon Chon because he threatened to report tax evasion by her father's company to the police. Soon Chon says he can't accept Dong Pil's abusive treatment to his family. Unbeknownst to them, Jun Tae monitors their fight from the CCTV camera. Even he already knows that there are some recordings that Hyun Do deliberately deleted. After Song Gook's death, Goom Sog tells Ju Hee that their father did not leave any inheritance to her. Tae Yong, who happens to be there, suddenly feels irritated because Ju Hee is being treated unfairly by his brothers. Then he says he knows a good lawyer and will help her get her inheritance. Soon after, Ju Hee and Tae Yong meet Alex Bu, who is very impressed with his foresight because he can distinguish between real and fake paintings. Meanwhile, Soon Chon takes Moonkey to Soon Ah's salon and gives her his phone number so she can call him if she is in trouble. Unbeknownst to them, Jong Goon is in the salon spying on Soon Chon on orders from Yo Jin, who wants to try to find his weaknesses. After seeking information from his lawyer, Soon Chon tells Ju Hee that she must give up her father's inheritance because Song Gook is heavily in debt. In fact, the house Ju Hee lives in is going up for auction by Goom Sog. One night, Tae Yong gets into a fight with Dong Pil, who is flirting with Soon Hee. An emotional Tae Yong even takes the wheel of Dong Pil's car and takes him somewhere. Then Soon Ah asks Soon Chon for help to stop Tae Yong's actions until finally, he managed to stop the car Tae Yong was driving. Soon after, Soon Chon asks Dong Pil to forget about the incident or else his company's secrets will be exposed. On the other hand, Yo Jin also tries to ditch Tae Yong's attack and reports him to the police so that Soon Chon obeys her orders. Meanwhile, Jun Tae continues to search for information because he suspects that Tae Yong is the culprit in Song Gook's murder. Later that night, Jun Tae asks Soon Chon questions about Song Gook's death. Not long after, several people claiming to be the police arrested him and took him somewhere. 
Apparently, it was one part of the welcoming ceremony for Soon Chon joining the Amicus Club, a club of influential conglomerates and businessmen. There, he sees some of his school friends, including Jong Goon and Yo Jin. As Soon Chon is about to leave, he is given a drink laced with sleeping pills by Jun Tae. Then Jun Tae asks him about Song Guk's death, but he says he didn't kill Song Guk. It turns out that Yo Jin eavesdrops on the conversation. Elsewhere, Tae Yong gives Ju Hee a stun gun so she can protect herself because she lives alone. However, Tae Yong feels strange when he sees a photo of Song Guk there. The next morning, Soon Chon has a nightmare that Tae Yong killed his family. Then he asks Moonki what he thinks of Tae Yong. Moonki revealed that Tae Yong is very stubborn and sometimes annoying, but actually, he is kind and caring. Moonki also tells Soon Chon that Tae Yong always panics when he sees blood. The next day, Yo Jin visits Hyun Do and tells him about Jun Tae's treatment of Soon Chon because she realizes that if Soon Chon gets into trouble, then her plans to make the Dosen group's fortune will fail. Yo Jin says that she wants to get engaged to Soon Chon. Meanwhile, at the convenience store, Soon Chon deliberately angers Tae Yong to see how far he can control his anger. However, Soon Chon finds no sign that Tae Yong can kill someone. At home, Hyun Do is angry with Jun Tae for treating Tae Yong like a criminal, making him beat Jun Tae with a stick. Then Young Sin tries to quell her husband's anger and says that Jun Tae has always followed his orders to help the incompetent Tae Young. Shortly after, he accuses Young Sin of wanting to control the Dosen group's assets. On the other hand, Ju Hee, who has been kicked out of the house, decides to stay in a hotel, while Gum Sog only gives 500 million won to her and breaks the family ties between them. Elsewhere, Soon Chon is on a historical tour with Club Amicus, and he finds out that Jun Tae has bullied Tae Young since he was a teenager. In the club, he learns how to play stock properly. On tour, Yo Jin warns Soon Chon to be more careful as Jun Tae is suspicious of Song Guk's death. She also said Ju Hee should not hear rumors about her father's murder. A few days later, Lee Chol was at the office of a well-known webtoon company for an interview. Unfortunately, the manager judged that he was not optimal at drawing after the accident he had experienced. While at home, he is also frustrated about Tae Young's tuition fees. However, Tae Young said he would not go to college and chose to work. At Hyun Do's residence, Young Sin meets Jun Tae, who was previously beaten by her husband. Moments later, she notices that Tae Young's jacket, which was supposed to be burned, is being sold online by her maid. Then she asks her maid to return the coat because she is sure that Hyun Do is hiding something. At night, Ju Hee meets Soong Chon with Tae Young at a cafe. Soong Chon asks her to treat him as a friend and to let him know if she is having trouble. When going home, Ju Hee gets a call from her former maid, who asks her for money in exchange for information about her father's death. A few days later, Hyun Do seems to like Soong Chon's advertising idea at a Dosen group meeting. Alex Bu even compliments him and tells Hyun Do that his son will become a great businessman. At a cafe, Eugene accidentally sees Ju Hee, who meets Tae Yong before giving the money she had in a suitcase and plans to hand over the money to her former maid, who will reveal her father's death. Then Yo Jin immediately calls Soon Chon to prevent Ju Hee from meeting her former maid. At a crossroads, Soon Chon sees the maid crossing the street to meet Ju Hee, but unexpectedly, the maid was suddenly hit by a truck and died. He realizes it was Hyun Do's doing, so he quickly leaves the place even though Ju Hee sees him. Seeing the blood, Tae Yong's anxiety disorder recurs and makes Ju Hee panic so that she loses her suitcase. Elsewhere, Young Sin is on the phone with Jun Tae after learning that the blood stain on Tae Yong's suit is Song Guk's. Hearing this, Jun Tae plans to use this to threaten Hon Do so that he ends up giving all of Tae Yong's property and shares to Jun Tae. Not only that, but Jun Tae also asked Hyun Do to send his son to America. Meanwhile, Ju Hee must now leave the hotel after her money is stolen. On the other hand, Tae Yong feels the world is unfair to him, especially after seeing his parents work hard to pay for Lee Chol's treatment. Amid his despair, Alex Bu offers Tae Yong a quick way to make money over the phone. At the Hyun Do residence, Soon Chon is seen being beaten with a stick by Jun Tae. The scene then shows Jun Tae's past, revealing that he was the shooter that killed James, but he blamed Tae Yong, who was in America at the time. Tae Yong, still innocent, is forced to admit that he shot James because Jun Tae threatened to kill him. In the present, Yo Jin goes to a pajama party and meets Ju Hee, who thinks that the suitcase Yo Jin is carrying is her suitcase. After proving that her accusations were false, Yo Jin said that the bankruptcy of her father's company was karma because in the past, Yo Jin, who was still Nara at that time, felt hurt. In fact, Yo Jin did take Ju Hee's chosen suitcase, and instead of returning it to her, Yo Jin gives the suitcase to a homeless woman on the side of the road. On the other hand, after Hyun Do manages to secure Tae Yong's jacket, which is covered in Song Guk's blood, he must send Soong Chon to America because Hyun Do doesn't want his son to get into trouble again. Before Soong Chon leaves for America, he texts Ju Hee and visits his family's place to ensure they are okay. After seeing his parents and older sister happy with Tae Yong, he rushed to the airport. Not long after, Ju Hee came to say goodbye. 
But after meeting Soon Chon, who is now Tae Yong, she quickly realizes that her former maid recognized Tae Yong when she was about to cross the street, so she panicked and was killed by a truck. Ju Hee immediately assumed that it was Tae Yong who was seen by her former maid on the night of her father's death and was the person who had killed her father. Ju Hee, who was annoyed, then demanded that Tae Yong confess that he was the one who killed her father. However, Ju Hee was quickly stopped by the Huang family's guards and whisked away from the scene before causing a commotion at the airport. Seeing her reaction, Soon Chon becomes even sadder because now the girl he loves hates him. Ten years later, Tae Yong, who is still Soon Chon, conducts a job interview at a company. Even though his abilities and requirements meet the classification to be accepted by the company, the company seems to look down on him because he comes from a poor family. After the interview, Tae Yong left the company. At the same time, he saw an advertisement board showing Yo Jin's advertisement, which is now a successful beauty product businesswoman. Meanwhile, at Yo Jin's office, Jong Goon, who now runs a business in the entertainment sector, is seen trying to persuade her to be a guest star on his variety show. Suddenly, Ju Hee, who has worked in the investigative division of a TV station, calls Jong Goon and warns him and Yo Jin about her team's plan to carry out an investigation of gambling conducted by Amicus. The Amicus party hosted by the conglomerates was being held in a very lively place. Ju Hee and Tae Yong, who are conducting an investigation, are seen at the party and disguised as waiters to get evidence of gambling by the conglomerates. Not long after, Jun Tae and his friend come and join the party. Soon Chon, who has turned into a young delinquent, is also seen enjoying the Amicus party while drinking and dancing with several women. At the same time, Yo Jin comes to the party with Jong Goon and immediately meets Soon Chon, who has become her fiancé. On the other hand, Ju Hee managed to record the gambling activity at the party in a room. Unfortunately, one of her investigative team is caught by party security, so she tries to escape. At the same time, Soon Chon takes Ju Hee to a safer place. However, she is quite surprised by the change in his appearance and demeanor when she thinks he is in America. Then he asks whether Ju Hee has been looking for him all along because she still suspects him of being her father's killer. Soon Chon immediately clarified that he didn't do that because nothing would benefit him. Moments later, Tae Young arrives at the venue and asks Soon Chon, who is now embracing Ju Hee, to stay away from her. Meanwhile, party security, who knew that Ju Hee and Tae Yong were members of the investigation team, immediately dragged them out of the party after Yo Jin informed security about their whereabouts. At that time, Soon Chon accidentally meets Jun Tae, who still treats him roughly. However, unlike before, he now looks oblivious and doesn't mind Jun Tae's rude attitude toward him. After Jun Tae leaves, Yo Jin, annoyed with Soon Chon, decides to leave there, making him catch her up. When they're both in the car, Yo Jin asks why Soon Chon didn't fight back when Jun Tae put him down. Then he casually answers to keep her calm. Annoyed by Soon Chon's answer, Yo Jin suddenly stops the car, and not long after, Hyun Do's men arrest Soon Chon and take him to meet Hyun Do. When Soon Chon is taken to his house, a female butler and Young Sin are surprised by the change in his appearance and demeanor. In his father's room, after Hyun Do asks why he decided to return to Korea, Soon Chon explains that he is bored and lonely in America. Hyun Do is also curious about Soon Chon's desire to become heir to the Dosen Group Company. He casually replies that there's nothing else he can do but relax since he no longer owns shares in Dosen and his father isn't providing any help while he is in America. Moving on to Ju Hee's residence, she is seen opening a box of files on her father's murder which she has kept for 10 years because she is still trying to find out who killed her father. Ju Hee also suspects the involvement of several people in the case of her father's death which are all related to the Dosen group. On the other hand, Tae Yong receives a call from Soon Chon, who now only spends his daily life getting drunk until morning and sleeping on the streets. Knowing that Soon Chon's life has been ruined, Yong Sin asks Jun Tae not to worry about his presence threatening his position as heir to the Dosen group. One day, Soon Chon unhesitatingly gets drunk in public and takes a girl to a hotel, making the reporters rush to cover the story. In fact, when he found out reporters were following him, Soon Chon kissed her on purpose. After entering a hotel room, it was seen that several people were waiting there and gave applause for what he had done. At that time, he only pretends to be drunk and brings a woman who turns out to be Moonkey, his personal assistant, to attract the attention of reporters. Moments later, Soon Chon has a meeting with his team and explains that he purposely made his life look ruined so Jun Tae won't see him as an opponent. Like when he kept getting assassination attempts in America which left his body still with some scars from the attack. The assassination attempt also made Soon Chon finally get engaged to Yo Jin because she had saved him. Even he also gave him his golden spoon to her. Meanwhile, Soon Chon's real family life looks better after Lee Chol opens a souvenir business in a shop offered by An Mu In. The next day, news about the son of the owner of the Dosen Group using illegal drugs was broadcast in the media, causing the Dosen Group stock to plummet. As it turns out, this is part of Soon Chon's plan to buy most of Dosen Group's shares. 
Meanwhile, at Soon Chon's family home, Tae Young is seen cleaning up some of his old books until he finds Soon Chon's old note about a golden spoon. Moving on to the ongoing Dosen Group Board of Directors meeting, many representatives of the Board of Directors are asking Jun Tae to step down from the CEO position because they find his performance unsatisfactory after letting a news story about Soon Chon get out in the media, causing the company's stock to plummet. However, Jun Tae doesn't seem to accept the decision. He thinks it is unfair. Moments later, Soon Chon walks into the room and provides some evidence that Jun Tae committed crimes against the Dosen Group. Hearing this, Jun Tae denies all accusations and thinks Soon Chon has no right to speak at the meeting because he does not own shares in the Dosen Group. Hyun Do then explains that Soon Chon, currently known as Tae Yong, has the right to speak at board meetings because he has become the largest shareholder in Dosen Group. Jun Tae, who was very shocked and angry, immediately left the meeting room to contact Ju Hee and told her that Tae Yong was her father's killer 10 years ago. After getting the call, Ju Hee immediately leaves the office and meets Soon Chon to ask for an exclusive interview about the life journey of the Dosen Group's son. Unfortunately, he refused the interview request, making Ju Hee try to stop him from leaving there. Suddenly, Yo Jin arrives and warns her not to disturb her fiancé. Ju Hee, who still wants Soon Chon to be interviewed, finally meets Young Sin and asks for her help to persuade him to agree to be interviewed. After meeting Young Sin, Ju Hee, still at Hyun Do's residence, immediately entered Soon Chon's room to look for a clue and saw a locked safe. At night, Yo Jin and her father have dinner at Hyun Do's house to discuss her relationship. In a dinner conversation, Young Sin explains why her family must agree that Soon Chon, known as Tae Yong, must marry Yo Jin, the daughter of a businessman with much smaller assets than the Dosen Group. Hearing this, Dong Pil is speechless, and Yo Jin also feels hurt after Young Sin mentions her ordinary beauty. At that time, Soon Chon stood up for Yu Jin and told Young Sin that Yu Jin had helped him while he was in America to survive. After dinner, she hugs him and thanks him for standing up for her in front of Young Sin. Soon after, Soon Chon quickly lets go of the hug and says that he did it because he sees Yu Jin as a co worker who will be of mutual benefit in the future. Yu Jin, who has fallen in love with him, is silent as she watches Soon Chon leave. In Yo Jin's room, she still looks annoyed with Soon Chon, who thinks of herself as just an ordinary business partner. While looking at Soon Chon's gold spoon, she mutters that he doesn't know the one rule where the owner of the gold spoon must really keep the gold spoon from being used by others because anyone who uses someone else's gold spoon will get a memory of the owner of the spoon. In the morning, Soon Chon suddenly shows up at TV station Ju Hee's office, and Tae Yong is working to do an interview that he had previously refused. Soon Chon's arrival as Tae Yong, the young CEO of the Dosen Group, makes the employees at the TV station welcome him, and one of the managers there asks the real Tae Yong, who works part time, to buy coffee. Because Tae Yong took too long to buy the coffee, when he returned, Soon Chon had finished a meeting discussing the time of the interview and seemed about to leave the TV station office soon. The manager scolded him for being gone too long. When Soon Chon saw that, he realized that if he hadn't traded his life, he would be in Tae Yong's shoes. When Soon Chon returns home, he meets Jun Tae, who reminds him to self-reflect on killing others. Then he says that Jun Tae is the real killer, even he notices the shirt Jun Tae wore when he killed a student in America. Because of this, Jun Tae is annoyed and wonders how Soon Chon can remember the incident, so he finally decides to calm down in the bar. Sometime later, Young Sin arrives to pick up a drunken Jun Tae and asks his younger brother to fight again for the CEO position of the Dosen Group. However, Jun Tae tells Young Sin to kill Soon Chon, also known as Tae Yong, so he doesn't get in his way. At the Dosen Group office, when Hyun Do and some of his employees are seen discussing company developments, suddenly, an angry Young Sin enters the room and stops the meeting. After all the employees left, Hyun Do calmly asked about the purpose of his wife's visit. Young Sin, who owns some shares in Dosen Group, reveals that she will get in the way if he gives Soon Chon a high position. Hearing his wife threaten him, Hyun Do tells Young Sin that he already knows that Jun Tae is her son, not his younger brother, as she has always said. Young Sin, who feels threatened, finally just chooses to remain silent. Meanwhile, Soon Chon and Moonki investigate Jun Tae's involvement in the murder of Song Guk, Ju Hee's father, after Soon Chon finds some evidence. When Soon Chon opens his safe from Ju Hee's room, he can see the safe's password from a hidden camera he put in when Ju Hee entered his room some time ago. The next day, Hyun Do, who is in his office, asks his male secretary to call Soon Chon. However, the secretary informs him that Soon Chon is not in his room because he has an important meeting which makes Hyun Do curious. It turned out that Soon Chon was at a restaurant to meet Tae Yong, who was applying for a job at the Dosen Group Company. Not long after, Moonki accompanied Soon Chon's family, who came to the restaurant after receiving an invitation from Soon Chon. However, Hyun Do, curious about Soon Chon's important meeting, also comes to the restaurant, so he joins Soon Chon's family event. While eating, Hyun Do notices that Soon Chon, whom he knows as Tae Yong or his son, has the same eating habits as Lee Chol, which makes him a little surprised and jealous. 
At home, Soon Chon meets Hyun Do and asks about his father's intention to visit the family for a meal with him earlier. Hyun Do replies that he wants to know why Soon Chon left his job and chose to eat with other people's families. Hyun Do explains that empathy is the biggest enemy of many people who want to be successful because empathy can eliminate the desire to compete with someone. Soon Chon looks sad to hear his words and says he feels jealous of Lee Chol's family, who always trusts their children, before he finally leaves Hyun Do. A few days later, the TV station crew is at the Hyun Do residence for an exclusive interview with Soon Chon. As the interview begins, Ju Hee sneaks into Soon Chon's room and opens the safe with the password. Unfortunately, she finds no evidence regarding her father's murder in the safe, and instead, she finds a book filled with Mr. Smile and a book that he gave to Soon Chon, who has not exchanged fate with Tae Yong. Unknown to Juhi, Soon Chon entered the room and asked why she opened his safe. Then Juhi asks him, who has now become Tae Yong, about the book she once gave him. Soon Chon calmly replies that he stole the book because he loved Juhi when he was in high school. Soon Chon then reminds Juhi not to do anything reckless by barging into other people's rooms. However, she insists that she will do anything to reveal the truth about her father's death because she believes that Soon Chon, also known as Tae Yong, was involved in the murder. Not long after, Soon Chon gets a message from Yo Jin showing that she is eating with Tae Yong using his gold spoon. Upon seeing the message, he panics and rushes to meet her, asking Ju Hee to leave his room. Soon Chon looks angry when he confronts Yo Jin and asks her the purpose of doing this. She explains that it was a warning to him not to go near Ju Hee, or she will make Tae Yong use his golden spoon so that Tae Yong can get his memory. On the other hand, Ju Hee, who was in her room, remembered a book with Mr. Smile and Soon Chon safe reminded her of her nickname as Mr. Smile when she was little. Turning to Soon Chon's parents, they are now at Hyun Do's residence to deliver food orders. Before they leave, Lee Chol accidentally sees a set of tools for drawing comics that he has wanted for a long time, so he asks Yong Sin for permission to look at them. As it turns out, Hyun Do had deliberately put the drawing equipment there to get Lee Chol's attention. Meanwhile, at the Hyun Do office, he deliberately invites Tae Yong, known as Soon Chon, to offer him a job with a high position and high salary at the Dosen Group Company. However, he seems hesitant to accept the job, so he asks Hyun Do for some time to consider the offer. Meanwhile, Ju Hee meets Jun Tae at a cafe to ask him to be an informant because the TV station where she currently works plans to rebroadcast the incident of her father's murder. Ju Hee also tries to provoke Jun Tae by taking off the blazer she is wearing so he can see a picture of Mr. Smile on his t-shirt while calling him Mr. Smile. Hearing himself called Mr. Smile, Jun Tae looks angry and pulls Ju Hee's hair while threatening her. Luckily, Soon Chon comes to save her and says that he will kill Jun Tae if he hurts Ju Hee. An enraged Jun Tae then punches Soon Chon, causing them to fight. When Soon Chon is cornered, Ju Hee uses her electric shock device and urges him to get out of there. After being far from the cafe, Soon Chon asks her not to have anything to do with Jun Tae, who is not afraid to hurt others. After the cafe incident, Soon Chon invites Tae Yong and Ju Hee to work together to reveal Jun Tae as Song Guk's killer. At Ju Hee's house, Soon Chon provides some evidence about the murder that Jun Tae committed by scapegoating Tae Yong's name before Soon Chon changes his fate. Soon Chon then plans to find the person Jun Tae ordered to kill Song Guk. Meanwhile, Tae Yong and Ju Hee's task is to search the CCTV at the time of Song Guk's murder. To kick off his plan, Soon Chon and Moonkey are spotted at a nightclub to meet Jun Tae's confidant. Meanwhile, Jun Tae is now sneaking into Ju Hee's house and finds evidence that he was involved in Song Guk's murder, so he plans to kill Ju Hee. Finally, Jun Tae hides around Ju Hee's house until she comes home, and he immediately grabs a rock to attack her. Before the action begins, suddenly Ju Hee gets a call from Soon Chon informing her that he will come to her house. Not long after, Soon Chon visits Ju Hee at her house and gives her the information he got from Jun Tae's confidante. Having been busy all day, Soon Chon looks tired and sleepy, so he falls asleep on her shoulder. The next morning, Soon Chon wakes up earlier than Ju Hee and is seen preparing breakfast. Tae Yong, who came to Ju Hee's place that morning, felt jealous after seeing Soon Chon there. While having breakfast together, Tae Yong, still curious about the gold spoon's record, suddenly asks Soon Chon that, which makes him panic, so he decides to leave immediately. Seeing his strange behavior, Tae Yong becomes even more suspicious and curious about the golden spoon. The scene switches to Hyun Do, who receives a report that the real killer of Song Guk is Jun Tae, not Tae Yong. Because of that, Hyun Do goes to Jun Tae's place with a brown folder. At a restaurant, Ju Hee is seen having lunch with her female senior, and she sees a homeless woman carrying a suitcase that closely resembles the one she lost 10 years ago. Ju Hee then decides to meet the homeless woman, but she cannot pursue her after losing track of her. Sometime after, Jun Tae turns himself into the police for the murder he committed against Song Guk, causing various media outlets to broadcast the news. Soon Chon is shocked by this and wonders why Jun Tae would turn himself into the police voluntarily. Meanwhile, Tae Yong, who is walking while thinking about his life, suddenly sees a crystal ball rolling toward him. 
Then he takes the crystal ball and returns it to the old lady selling antiquities who offers a gold spoon like the one Soon Chon had. Out of curiosity about the spoon, Tae Yong finally buys it, and now he realizes that he is the real Tae Yong after checking how the golden spoon works in Soon Chon's notebook. Knowing this, when Tae Yong delivers the ordered food to Hyun Do's residence, he now has a gold spoon and asks the waiter there to give him food and eats the food given using his gold spoon. On another occasion, Tae Yong met Ju Hee and asked her to chat together during a break. He realizes he can change his fate again, so he seeks revenge on Soon Chon by telling Ju Hee not to give him any gifts on his birthday. Then he asked her not to answer his declaration of love because, according to him, being her close friend was enough to make him happy. Switch to Hyun Do, who was able to attract the hearts of many important people in Korea to launch his business and build the Dosen Group. With his ingenuity, he can always give various kinds of irresistible gifts so that he can easily ask all of his relations for help when he is in trouble. However, his first failure was when he tried to win the heart of Lee Chol, who likes comics, because Lee Chol refused his gift. At Soon Chon family house, everyone looks like they're having dinner together. However, Tae Young, who already knew his true identity, seemed angry, making Soon Hye, Soon Chon's mother, feel very sad. When he walks into his room, Tae Young sees his golden spoon and is determined to regain his position as the only son of the Dosen Group CEO Soon Chon had traded for. Meanwhile, Soon Chon already knew that Tae Young had come to his residence and eaten food using a gold spoon, so he asked the female butler not to allow anyone to come and eat food at his house. On the other hand, Young Sin now seems sad after Jun Tae is imprisoned, so she grudges against Soon Chon. Moments later, the female butler visits Young Sin and reports Soon Chon's earlier requests. Hearing the report, she deliberately invited Tae Young to her house and prepared food for him. Then she asks why Soon Chon forbade Tae Young to come and eat at their house. Hearing that, Tae Young becomes more convinced with his suspicions that Soon Chon has traded his fortunes after hearing Young Sin's question. Then he ate the food using the magic gold spoon. Unknown to them, it turns out that Hyun Do saw Tae Young eating food at his house, so he calls Soon Chon to let him know. Soon Chon seems even more agitated after hearing the news, so he decides to go to his poor family's house. When Soon Chon came, he only met with his mother, and after Tae Young returned, he immediately explained his arrival to invite Tae Young to eat because Tae Young had asked several times to eat at his house. The next day, when Ju Hee is at the office, she suddenly gets a call from her senior, who has managed to find her luggage at the restaurant they usually go to, so she rushes to the restaurant. When she got there, Ju Hee opened the suitcase but did not find her money and immediately asked the homeless woman about her money. The homeless woman said that Ju Hee had very little money and could not meet her needs as Goom Suk Ja, a member of the Gangnam District Council. Hearing that confession, Ju Hee and her senior thought that the homeless woman was mentally disturbed. However, when the woman explains that Goom Suk Ja is currently her servant, she searches for the golden spoon until now to change her fate again. Then she asks Suk Ja to confirm if the spoon in question is a golden spoon that can make someone rich. As if someone understands her, Suk Ja asks Ju Hee about the whereabouts of the old woman selling antiques. At Soong Chon's luxurious residence, Tae Yong comes to fulfill Soong Chon's previous invitation. When he saw Tae Yong take out his gold spoon, Soong Chon looked calm, as if he had planned something. Shortly after, they get into an argument after Soong Chon asks Tae Yong if he is willing to leave his family now to get rich. Then Tae Yong said that it was Soong Chon was willing to trade his family for wealth. Finally, Soon Chon asked Tae Yong to immediately eat the food that was prepared and waited for his reaction after learning that his golden spoon had been exchanged by Soon Chon for a fake one when Soon Chon came to his poor family's house. However, suddenly Tae Yong discouraged him from eating the food and left there. An astonished Soon Chon immediately catches up with him and angrily asks him to quickly eat all the food he prepared. But Tae Yong insists on rejecting it and says that he will not exchange a family that truly loves him for wealth. He confirms that he is ready to be a Soon Chon forever. After the fight, he left Soon Chon, who looked angry with himself. Soon Chon then decides to go to a bar to drink and forget about the previous fight between him and Tae Yong. After Yo Jin came to see him, Soon Chon told her everything that happened, and now he feels defeated by Tae Yong, who dared to choose family over wealth. Yo Jin then reminds Soon Chon that it's not wrong for poor people like them to choose wealth because their previous life was so difficult. Feeling that someone understands him, Soon Chon, who starts to get drunk, finally goes with her to a hotel. In the hotel room, they do the unthinkable, but when Soon Chon remembers Ju Hee, he rushes off, leaving Yo Jin there. Meanwhile, Ju Hee is seen walking home to her house while thinking about the golden spoon that the homeless woman talked about earlier and the strangeness of Tae Yong she knows, so she thinks that the Tae Yong she knows right now is Soon Chon. Arriving at her house, Ju Hee saw Soon Chon waiting for her in front of the house and immediately hugged her after knowing she had come home, saying he had missed her. Then Ju Hee asks if it was Soon Chon who hugged her. Hearing her question, he immediately left there. Some time passes, and now the servants at the Hyun Do residence seem busy because it is the birthday of Soon Chon, now known as Tae Yong.
During this busy life, he sees Taeyong coming to deliver the ordered food. He is surprised because he remembered the Golden Spoon's rule not to meet each other's parents on birthdays. Unfortunately, before Soon Chon can prevent this, Hyeon-do arrives and sees him and Taeyong. However, nothing happens because Hyeon-do keeps calling him as Taeyong, so he thinks the rule isn't right. Sometime later, without Soon Chon noticing, his parents came, and his and Taeyong's fates were exchanged again because Lee Chol called him by his real name. Knowing that he had changed his fate, Soon Chon immediately exchanged his cell phone with Taeyong and sent a message to him to agree to Hyeon-do's plan, which would split the company's shares so that Taeyong would not get into trouble. After finishing delivering the food, Soon Chon, who is now with his father, said goodbye to leave because he wanted to meet the old woman selling gold spoons. Unfortunately, he did not find the whereabouts of the grandmother. Soon Chon, who is confused, then meets his mother there. Ju He, who was walking towards Soon Chon's family's house, was suddenly greeted by Lee Chol, who had just delivered the order. They finally walked together to his house. Arriving at the front of the house, Ju He sees Lee Chol entering several passwords that are the same as the password for the safe belonging to Soon Chon, now known as Taeyong. Realizing this, she asks about the passcode combination of Soon Chon and Soon Ah's birthdays reversed. Wanting to confirm her suspicions about Soon Chon, she immediately bids farewell to Lee Chol to go to the Dosen Group Company. In a room, Yo Jin, who doesn't know yet that Soon Chon and Taeyong have exchanged fortunes again, is still waiting for Soon Chon to arrive. After Taeyong arrives, Yo Jin slaps him for being upset about having been left at the hotel alone the night before. However, he looks taken aback and doesn't understand what she is talking about until he starts getting flashes of Soon Chon's previous memory. Seeing his strangeness in front of her, Yo Jin finally realized that Soon Chon had switched places with Taeyong again. At Soon Chon's house, while eating with his family, he suddenly gets a call from Yo Jin, so he moves away from the dining table to answer the call. When the call was picked up, she congratulated him on returning to his real family. Soon Chon is surprised to hear this and asks how Yo Jin knew that. Then she casually explains that she had met Taeyong and thought that either Soon Chon or Taeyong had met each other's parents on their birthdays. Soon Chon then tells about the golden spoon rule that didn't apply when Taeyong met Hyun Do earlier. Then she assumes that Taeyong is not Hyun Do's biological child, and finally, he asks Yo Jin to change fate with Taeyong again. However, because Yo Jin is still annoyed, she simply replies that it was a fitting punishment for him for leaving her at the hotel before she hangs up. After that, Yo Jin is surprised by Ju Hee's presence and starts to worry that Ju Hee overheard her conversation with Soon Chon. She frantically asks why Ju Hee is there, and Ju Hee simply replies that she wants to wish Taeyong a happy birthday. Switching to prison, Jun Tae is seen being visited by Yong Sin. Then he tells how he finally turned himself in as a suspect in Song Guk's murder. He explains that the night Song Guk was killed, he did not meet Song Guk, but Hyun Do threatens to admit that he killed Song Guk and that if he refuses, his secret when he killed students in America will be exposed by Hyun Do. Finally, Jun Tae makes Hyun Do's wish after he guarantees that he will help Jun Tae to be released from prison soon. On the other hand, when Soon Chon was walking on the pavement while thinking about returning to being Taeyong, he was suddenly surprised by Ju Hee driving a car and inviting him to the beach. Meanwhile, Yo Jin begins to find out the truth about Taeyong's birth father and meets Yong Sin to ask about Taeyong's birth mother. Then she explains that Taeyong's biological mother was an insane woman because she had an affair with Hyun Do's best friend and always asked him for a divorce. After getting this information, Yo Jin immediately contacted Soon Chon. However, he always rejected her call because he was currently at the beach and didn't really enjoy being with Ju Hee. Moments later, she tries to find out what Soon Chon is in front of her by asking a few questions about things they've done together. All of Soon Chon's affirmative answers, even though it's wrong, make Ju Hee realize that he has switched places with Tae Yong again, as she had overheard in Yo Jin's previous phone conversation. Even she finds out the truth, she tries to cover it up and goes back to having fun with Soon Chon. Some time passed, and Ju Hee finally said that she knew Soon Chon had exchanged fortunes with Tae Yong. He is surprised to hear her confession, upsetting him. Then Soon Chon tells Ju Hee not to bring it up again, leaving her alone on the beach. As the sun began to set, Ju Hee seemed still on the beach contemplating. Suddenly, Soon Chon meets her again and admits he has left his family and her to be rich. Hearing the confession, Ju Hee hugs him and says she misses the real Soon Chon. At night, Yo Jin is seen still thinking about Soon Chon, who has returned to his original life. Although she initially thinks of Soon Chon as an ordinary business partner, now she really falls in love with him. Meanwhile, Soon Chon still spends time with Ju Hee in the car after returning from the beach. Without them realizing it, Yo Jin is not far from there and sees them having fun, making her jealous. Feeling annoyed with Soon Chon, Yo Jin meets Lee Chol and invites him to eat together because she has something important to say. On the other hand, Tae Yong has now returned to his luxurious life and seems to be enjoying red wine. 
Suddenly, he accidentally causes the red wine bottle to fall and spill on the floor, which makes him think back to the flash of Song Guk's death, so he immediately runs out of the room to meet Moonkey. Elsewhere, Hyun Do is now seen in an art museum belonging to Alex Boo. Meanwhile, when Ju Hee notices something about the gold spoon, she immediately calls Soon Chon and asks him to meet her around where the old lady selling antiques usually resides. On the other hand, Taeyong, who had a panic attack after seeing the spilled pool of red wine, remembered how Ju Hee's father had died. At that time, he looks angry at Song Guk after discussing the events in America, but he decides to leave Song Guk's residence. After Taeyong left, he changed his mind and finally returned to see Song Guk because he was curious about the complete story that happened to him in America. Arriving at the house, Taeyong had seen Song Guk lying in a pool of blood, so his anxiety disorder suddenly recurred and made him semi conscious. However, in his memory, he catches a glimpse of Hyun Do's face before he finally collapses. After a long wait, Soon Chon finally comes to see Ju Hee. Knowing that he has three chances to choose who his parents are, Ju Hee asks Soon Chon not to choose to be Taeyong. Unfortunately, he could not grant her request because Soon Chon exchanged fortunes again with Taeyong after the clock struck 12 at night. Inside the museum, Hyun Do heads to a display of golden spoons, which reveals that he is also a gold spoon user who can change his life. Twenty years ago, Hyun Do was actually Kwon Yohan, his best friend. Yohan, who does not come from a conglomerate family like him, feels jealous of his best friend's life as the heir to the Dosen group. Yohan's jealousy peaked when Hyun Do and Taeyong's biological mother married and became a happy family with a son named Taeyong. One day, he meets an old woman selling antiques who offers the gold spoon, so Yohan buys and uses it until his dream of becoming Hyun Do comes true. Whereas Ju Hee now feels confused because previously she was sure that it was Soon Chon in front of her, but now she is actually meeting Soon Chon, who has turned into Taeyong. Soon Chon then convinces Ju Hee that the Taeyong in front of her is Soon Chon. Having switched places again, he rushes back to Hyun Do's residence to meet Taeyong, who now looks confused about why he's suddenly at someone else's house. Soon Chon then explains that they switched places again, and he also told Taeyong that Hyun Do wasn't his real father. Unfortunately, their conversation had to stop after Hyun Do came. At Soon Chon's house, Lee Chol seems to be thinking about something after he meets Yo Jin at the restaurant. When meeting her, Lee Chol gets a gold spoon belonging to Soon Chon, and Yo Jin asks him to eat the food provided using the gold spoon if he wants to know what Soon Chon has been doing all this time. Out of curiosity, Lee Chol finally decided to eat using the spoon, and suddenly, he got a memory of Soon Chon changing his fate with Taeyong, so he felt very sad and disappointed for the actions of his son, who was willing to leave his family for the sake of wealth. The next day, Soon Chon, who was in the office lobby, saw his father waiting for him to invite him to have lunch together, which made him very happy. Unfortunately, Soon Chon finally refuses Lee Chol's invitation after Hyun Do comes and asks him to come with him. On the way to the meeting place, Soon Chon still thinks about his father's unusual arrival at the office. Hyun Do, who saw him daydreaming, immediately reprimanded his son. Hyun Do explains that he will meet all his colleagues and introduces Soon Chon as his successor in the company. Hearing this, Soon Chon looks happy because his goal to become the heir to the Dosen group will soon be realized. Meanwhile, Ju Hee is now seen with Taeyong to give him a birthday present. When he opens the gift, Ju Hee calls him by his real name, so he is surprised that she knows everything about him swapping fortunes with Soon Chon. After a meeting with Hyun Do, Soon Chon goes to Yo Jin to call off their engagement after he realizes that he can't love her no matter how hard he tries. Unfortunately, Yo Jin doesn't seem to accept this decision until she threatens to give him his golden spoon to Lee Chol. Soon Chon says that he believes that Yo Jin would not do that because he believes that she actually has a good heart. After he leaves, Yo Jin realizes she made a big mistake by giving the golden spoon to Lee Chol. Because of this, she immediately went to Lee Chol to ask for Soon Chon's golden spoon. Back at Ju Hee, she is seen eating with Suk Ja and shows her a photo of Yo Jin to see if she is the person who gave a suitcase filled with money to Suk Ja years ago. When she saw the photo, Suk Ja said yes. While eating, she reveals that she is Goom Suk Ja, the real Gangnam counselor and the current Suk Ja known as her servant. It turns out that Suk Ja loves the husband of her maid, who is her first love, so she is willing to change her fate with that of her maid so she can be with the man she loves. However, the man sold her golden spoon, and she couldn't change her fate again until now. Meanwhile, Soon Chon, who knows that Taeyong is not Hyun Do's biological child, asks Moonkey to investigate Hyun Do's background. On the other hand, Soon Chon's family is seen spending time together in a park. Lee Chol, who already knows the truth, tries to accept that the Soon Chon with him now is Taeyong, and he is determined to love Taeyong like his biological son and forget the real Soon Chon. When Soon Chon's family returned home at night, they saw Soon Chon already in front of their house. Seeing him waiting for his family, Lee Chol, disappointed with him, immediately drives him to leave. Soon Chon is shocked by his father's harsh treatment, but he can't do anything about it, so he chooses to leave. 
Even though Soon Chon has decided to call off the engagement, Yo Jin still insists on getting him, and she asks Ju Hee to stay away from him, now known as Tae Yong. However, Ju Hee refuses the request because she knows all the truth about Soon Chon, including Yo Jin's past as Nara. However, she doesn't argue everything Ju Hee knows and calmly admits it. The next day, Tae Yong is with his friends, chatting about gossip in the Dosen group regarding Yo Han, Hyun Do's best friend, who suddenly drifted away. Hearing this, Tae Yong begins to suspect that Yo Han is related to his biological father. In prison, Jun Tae is seen fighting with Wee Nam, Yo Jin's father, so he has to be rushed to the hospital after getting seriously injured. On the other hand, Soon Chong gets a call from Lee Chol, who asks him to have dinner together. He immediately agrees to the request because he wants to see his father. At the same time, Lee Chol buys a suit for Tae Yong even though he knows Tae Yong is not his real son. On the way home, Lee Chol, who already knows all of Soon Chon's secrets, hugs Tae Yong and thanks him, who prefers to live with a poor family. Lee Chol also promised to try to be a good father to him. Not long after, Tae Yong said goodbye to go to Lee Chol, and he then went to a branch of the Dosen Group company to ask about Yohan. Meanwhile, Yong Sin, who is now at the hospital to accompany Jun Tae, is seen calling Hon Do and telling him of his happiness at having succeeded in delaying the decision to sentence Jun Tae because of his sick condition. Unfortunately, Hyun Do is unhappy to hear the news and thinks his wife has made a big mistake by acquitting a murderer. Hyun Do also explains all the crimes that Jun Tae has committed, including when he was in America, so Yong Sin immediately goes to the room where Jun Tae is being treated. Arriving in the room, she finds out that Jun Tae has escaped the hospital. Jun Tae, who had run away from the hospital, immediately called Hyun Do to meet with him. But Hyun Do refuses, so he is annoyed that he has been trying to do everything Hyun Do told him to do in exchange for him being released from prison soon and becoming the heir to the Dosen group. Hyun Do only explains that he originally had that intention. But, Jun Tae failed to wait in prison for a month, so he decided to give the Dosen group to Soon Chon, known as Tae Yong, who could withstand suffering while exiled to America for 10 years. Knowing that he can't persuade Hyun Do, Jun Tae begins plotting to kill Soon Chon and secretly follows him. Soon after, Soon Chon finally meets his father to have dinner at a restaurant. Lee Chol apologizes for how he treated him earlier. While chatting, Soon Chon suddenly gets a call from Jun Tae, causing him to panic and immediately ask permission to receive the call behind the restaurant. After arriving in a narrow alley behind the restaurant, Jun Tae had been waiting for Soon Chon and immediately attacked him with a drink bottle. An angry Jun Tae takes out his knife and tries to kill Soon Chon there. Suddenly, Lee Chol came and tried to block Jun Tae's action until he was stabbed with the knife. Seeing him covered in blood, Jun Tae flees from the scene. Meanwhile, Lee Chol, who begins to lose consciousness, calls Soon Chon by his real name, which makes him even sadder because all this time, his father has known the truth about him. After Lee Chol was in the hospital, his life couldn't be saved because he had lost a lot of blood. His family, who had gathered there, cried after the doctor broke the sad news. Tae Yong then asked Soon Chon who was the perpetrator of Lee Chol's stabbing, but because he was still devastated, he didn't answer the question and immediately went to look for Jun Tae. News of Lee Chol's death after being attacked by Jun Tae reaches Hyun Do, so he asks his assistant to arrest Jun Tae before the police find him. Moving on to Hyun Do's residence, Young Sin, who was having a party, seemed to be playing the piano in front of all the invited guests. Her piano playing shows her anxiety because before the party started, Young Sin had met Jun Tae, who came home with bloody hands. Surprisingly, she didn't ask what he had done and immediately helped him clean up the traces of blood on his hand before finally asking him to stay hidden until her party was over. Soon Chon returned to Hyun Do's residence to find Jun Tae in his room. Unfortunately, Jun Tae, who knows of Soon Chon's arrival, immediately hides behind a curtain so that Soon Chon cannot find him. After Soon Chon leaves, Jun Tae heads to Hyun Do's study to kill him. When he entered the room, Soon Chon had been waiting for him and immediately attacked him. However, with Jun Tae's martial arts skills, Soon Chon is cornered. Luckily, he is saved by Hyun Do, who enters the room and immediately points a gun at Jun Tae. Soon Chon then tries to call the police to arrest Jun Tae, but Hyun Do blocks him and orders his men to take Soon Chon out of the room. In the room, Hyun Do has no plans of turning Jun Tae over to the police because that would make Dosen Group stock plummet because of the media coverage. Hyun Do is also grateful that Jun Tae killed Lee Chol, who was a hindrance to his goals and promises to help him to be acquitted of the murder charge. However, Jun Tae doesn't trust Hyun Do, so he points his gun at Hyun Do. Calmly, Hyun Do asks Jun Tae to do this, but his words actually make Jun Tae discourage him. Then he tells Jun Tae that Young Sin is his real mother, not his older sister. Jun Tae, who is very surprised and disappointed with Young Sin, walks out of the room to where she is. All the guests then wondered why Jun Tae, reportedly in prison, was at home. Then he points his gun at Young Sin and asks if he is really her son. The invited guests who saw this were immediately frightened and ran out of the room. Young Sin, who was afraid, finally admitted this, which made Jun Tae feel betrayed, so he chose to die. 
The next day, Li Chol's funeral was held, and it was seen that An Muin had come to pay his respects to the late Li Chol. Not long after, Soon Chon came there with Zhu He. Although initially, Soon Chon's sister blames Soon Chon for her father's death, Soon He finally allows him to pay his respects. In front of his late father, Soon Chon paid his respects and regretted all his mistakes because of his greed to gain wealth which cost his father's life. At night, Soon Chon intends to return Taeyong's gold spoon, so he calls Taeyong to meet by the lake. The next day, they meet, and Soon Chon hands Taeyong his golden spoon while apologizing for making his life a mess. Suddenly, Taeyong asks if Soon Chon wants to return to his old life. Soon Chon, who feels guilty for his father's death, only replies that he doesn't have the right to choose and leaves the decision to Taeyong. Then Taeyong returned Soon Chon's gold spoon to Lee Chol's room and said that his decision was still the same as before to remain as Lee Soon Chon. Then he tells Soon Chon that he has found his real father named Johan, who died 20 years ago. Some time has passed, and Soon Chon is now trying to become a better person after his father's death. He is seen to be solving all the problems in the company so that the stock value that previously dropped has finally started to rise again. Small shareholders, like their friends, were also happy after seeing the increase in the share price of Dosen Group companies. Soon Chon then visits to see Alex Bu, who always helps him, and invites Hyun Do to have lunch at a convenience store, which surprises Hyun Do with the change in his son's attitude. Soon Chon explains that now he wants to be a better person and put his family first. Hearing his explanation, Hyun Do asks Soon Chon to return to his old self because his current personality will only prevent him from becoming a successful businessman. After meeting Soon Chon, Hyun Do now plans to make his personality return to the way he was before. At night, Ju He is seen accompanying Soon Chon, who is still working on some company files. Then she shares her suspicions with Hyun Do regarding the deaths of Jun Tae and her father because Hyun Do, with his power, could falsify the incident. Soon Chon then immediately calls Moonki to ask about the progress of the investigation into Song Guk's death. Moonki, who had come into the room, reported that he had not found any clues. However, he provides information that Yohan, who died, was actually found by Hyun Do. Not long after, Soon Chon calls Taeyong and asks to meet immediately to tell the news. On a quiet street, Taeyong, walking towards his meeting place with Soon Chon, was followed by several mysterious men who attacked him. Luckily, Soon Chon saw what happened, so he and Moonki immediately helped Taeyong to catch the man. Unfortunately, some of these men managed to escape. Moonki then explained that the mysterious man had been trained and that someone might want to kidnap Taeyong. After a moment's thought, Soon Chon suspects Hyun Do, and he also begins to realize that Hyun Do, who was previously Yohan, has swapped fortunes with the real Hyun Do with a golden spoon. Finally, Soon Chon decides to find the truth and asks Ju He to look after Taeyong. Not long after, Soon Chon goes to his office and tries to find evidence on Hyun Do's desk as a weapon against Hyun Do, who has hurt the people he loves. Shortly after, Soon Chon and Moonki head to an empty building to meet Hyun Do, who has been waiting for them. When meeting Hyun Do, Soon Chon calls him by the name Kwon Yohan, his real identity. Likewise, Hyun Do called Soon Chon by his real name because, from the start, Hyun Do knew that he had exchanged fortunes with Taeyong. Then he asks why Hyun Do uses a gold spoon, even though without one, Hyun Do was born into a rich family. Hyun Do explains that money is a god that can change everything, so he wants to get to the highest position to earn more. In fact, he will eliminate anyone who stands in his way, including Song Guk, Ju He's father. Hearing Hyun Do's madness, Soon Chon says he is a monster. However, he says that Soon Chon is also a monster like himself, and then he tries to persuade Soon Chon to become his successor. Hearing that, Soon Chon refuses because he has reported all of Hyun Do's crimes. Suddenly, a group from the prosecutor's office comes to catch Soon Chon, who turns out to have been framed by Hyun Do and bestows all of his blame on Soon Chon. Luckily, Soon Chon finally managed to escape from there. At Ju He's office, she is surprised to see a news broadcast that Soon Chon has become a suspect in her father's murder case. Meanwhile, Taeyong seemed to return his gold spoon and asked the old woman selling antiques to return his money. Moments later, Taeyong gets a call from Yo Jin informing him about Soon Chon's condition, who has become a suspect in Song Guk's murder. After that, Taeyong, who was angry, rushed to Hyun Do's residence. When he met Hyun Do, Taeyong expressed all the things he had felt so far, but Hyun Do blamed him and his principles, so he now ended up being a poor person. Taeyong then explains that he would rather be poor than rich by becoming a killer like Hyun Do. However, he calmly says that Taeyong can't find any evidence even though Taeyong wants to know Yohan's past memories because Soon Chon, like him, can't see the golden spoon selling grandmother and Amor to switch places back with Taeyong. Taeyong then decides to leave after hearing this. Outside, he realizes that Hyun Do most likely didn't know the Golden Spoon's last rule because Hyun Do never saw the antique dealer's grandmother again. Not long after, Taeyong immediately contacted Soon Chon and told him about it. 
On the other hand, Sun Chon, who gets a call from him, remembers the various antiques in the Alex Bu Museum that came from Hyondo and rushes to the museum. Having been unable to contact Sun Chon several times, Ju He decides to go find him. On the way, she meets Yo Jin, who looks worried about Sun Chon's condition, so she advises Ju He to ask Sun Chon to switch places back with Tae Yong. However, Ju He refuses because if that happens, then Tae Yong will be the victim. Meanwhile, Sun Chon is hiding in his real home with his mother, who prepares food for him. Sun Chon, known as Tae Yong, then asked why his mother was helping him. She replied that she believed he didn't do the things reported on television. Hearing that answer, he regrets everything he's done and wonders if he didn't change his fate. Now his father would be eating with him right now. When the dish is ready, Sun Chon takes out Hondo's golden spoon that he managed to grab earlier with Alex Boo's help. Then he uses the spoon to eat all of his mother's food. Soon after, he recalls all of Hyondo's memories. After eating his dinner, Sun Chon hugs his mother and calls her mother before rushing out of there. Soon Hye cries as if she has a different feeling about his treatment. Sun Chon, who now has Hyondo's memory, asks Ju He and Taeyong to look for a copy of the recording in his father's files when Yohan, who is now Hyondo, killed the real Hyondo. While unpacking her father's belongings, Senior Ju He calls her to the office and sees a tape showing how Yohan killed Hyondo. Unfortunately, because the tape was related to Hyondo, the most influential businessman in Korea, no one dared turn it over to the police. Meanwhile, Sun Chon finally gets into Hyondo's residence with Moonkey's help. Not long after, Hyondo is surprised to see Sun Chon enjoying a cup of tea. However, he looks calm to see Sun Chon there until he gets news that all the secret money he has in the Swiss bank has been donated to the penitentiary. He wonders how Sun Chon could do this since no one knows about the secret. Sun Chon then explains that Hyondo has forgotten the golden spoon rule not to be used by others because when someone else uses his gold spoon, all of his memories of being Johan will be known. At that time, Sun Chon had no intention of killing Hyun Do because, in his memory, he had once been proud of Sun Chon's achievements, so Sun Chon only asked him to atone for all his sins in prison. Finally, Hyun Do admits that he is indeed proud of Sun Chon and hopes that if Sun Chon is his son, he will continue the success of the Dosen Group Company. Hearing his explanation, Sun Chon looks off guard, and Hyun Do takes the opportunity to attack him. On the other hand, Yo Jin, who already knows about the footage of Hyun Do's murder, decides to upload the video on social media so that it becomes the talk of many people. Moving on to Hyun Do's residence, Sun Chon is now starting to run out of breath because of Hyun Do's attack, so he looks weak and faints. However, he suddenly regains consciousness and hits Hyun Do with a display until Hyun Do's head bleeds. Tae Young, who came there, tried to stop Sun Chon, who looked angry and was about to kill Hyun Do. When Hyun Do regains consciousness, he grabs a vase and slams it on Tae Young's head before he finally tries to escape through the back door. Hyun Do then meets Young Sin, who turns out to have teamed up with Sun Chon to put him in prison after she calls the police at home and arrests him. Meanwhile, Sun Chon decides to turn himself in on charges of murder and embezzlement of Dosing Group Company funds. A few days later, Sun Chon is released because Moonkey managed to find evidence of his innocence, including the iron that Hyun Do used to kill Song Guk. Juhi, who knows that Sun Chon is free, is happy and immediately meets him. In the interrogation room, Hyun Do orders his personal assistant to kill Sun Chon, and one of the servants at his residence is seen mixing poison into Sun Chon's drink. Arriving home, Sun Chon rushes into his room to retrieve his gold spoon and notices a glass of juice on the table that has previously been laced with poison. Not long after, Young Sin screams after she enters Sun Chon's room. Outside the house, Ju He is shocked when an ambulance suddenly arrives, and everyone looks panicked. Finally, she ran into the house until she didn't realize she had hit a man. While in front of Sun Chon's room, Ju He gets the news that the Dosing Group's only son has died and makes her cry hysterically when she sees a man's corpse being taken into an ambulance. Three years have passed, and now Tae Young has become a famous comic artist who writes stories about golden spoons. Soon Chon's mother and older sister are also seen living in an apartment with Moonkey, who is now Soong Ah's husband. Back to Joo Hee, she is now with Tae Yong at a restaurant where Suk Ja works. Suk Ja, seeing Joo Hee and Tae Yong's closeness, asks them to date, but Joo Hee refuses because she considers him as her best friend. While eating, Tae Yong expresses his desire to meet the grandmother who sells antiques to stop selling gold spoons because the gold spoon cost Soon Chon's father's life. Meanwhile, Yo Jin is married to Jong Goon and has a child. At the prison, Hyun Do, who is in a wheelchair, walks out after having his sentence suspended. By this time, he cannot move his body after Yong Sin secretly gives him medicine while in prison. Yong Sin reveals that she did this to avenge Hyun Do for killing Jun Tae and her husband, Yohan. Hearing this, Hyun Do, who is Yohan, is surprised to discover that Jun Tae is his son. Turning to Ju Hee, trying to meet Mr. Han, a gardener that Ju Hee will interview. Upon reaching there, a man tells her to find Mr. Han on the beach resting. Then she goes to the beach, and later, she meets Mr. Han, who turns out to be Sun Chon. 
However, Soon Chon, who has now become Mr. Han, can't remember his past, and neither can Ju He, who knows him as Mr. Han. As it turned out, during the death of the Dosen group's only son three years ago, Soon Chon seemed to have discouraged himself from drinking the drink. At the same time, Mr. Han was using his golden spoon to swap his life with Soon Chon. Mr. Han, who has become Soon Chon, enters the room and drinks the poison juice, killing him. While Soon Chon, as Mr. Han, looks away from there and does not recognize Ju He, who had bumped into him. At the beach, Soon Chon, who has been living as Mr. Han, said that he always wants to be recognized by the people he loves, even if his appearance and name differ. Hearing those words, Ju He remembered Soon Chon, who had said the same thing. Although they don't recognize each other, they seem to enjoy their time together that afternoon at the beach. The series' end shows an old woman selling antiques and returning to selling gold spoons. The moral message we can learn from this series is that being grateful is very important in living life.